Uh, all right, man. All Let's right, baby. Keep on rolling. TikTok, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all over the world. It's your friendly neighborhood philosopher here with my good friends, AP, the apostate prophet, and this goat. That's a very, very good goat. That will never get old. I can do that a thousand times. It will never get old. It is um, the perfect goat. All right, AP, you and I both, you and I both. Love Richard Dawkins. We, yeah, we both love him and take everything he says as biblical truth. Yes. Hey. Did you see his new comments about uh, Ramadan? <laughs> I did see it. I saw it, and um, a, lots of people were were very angry about it. So, yeah, yeah. I saw I saw uh, Mehdi Hassan's or Hassan. We'll find out in a minute because we got an interview with him. Do you know what it is? Because you can pronounce that either way. Some people Mehdi say Hassan. Some people yeah. Hassan. It's Hassan. Hassan. It's Hassan. Yeah. Okay. Hassan. So we've got. Mehdi Hassan, and he kind of flipped out. And then, a anyway, after he flipped out on Twitter, which that's what you shared, right? You replied to him or something? Yeah, I, I, I did. I, yeah, I, I replied to Mehdi Hassan because he he made a tweet uh, where it was like, uh, for years I have been told by Richard Dawkins fans that he's just a balanced guy and all that. But now... Uh, turns out he's just an Islamophobic something something, and I just replied to him how about how it's okay to dislike Islam more than everything else. So um, yeah, well that is true, and and then I, I replied to what you said, and I pointed out that I don't even understand what Mehdi Hassan is complaining about. Him and Richard Dawkins <laughs> agree; they actually agree. They both prefer living in a country massively influenced by christianity they do not want to live in afghanistan what is the what is the disagreement there um anyway uh diane here asks what did he say oh you're about to find out what he said diane <laughs> you see. so i have three video clips pulled up i have three video clips that we're going to check out i do not know that we'll get uh to all of them because uh well sometimes uh sometimes we just keep running our mouths for long periods of time and by we i mean ap and the other factor is AP still horribly, horribly sick. Oh, He's okay. sick. If I wish I had the sick, I wish I had the sick button on my uh, stream. I'm deck still here. horribly, horribly a little bit sick. But yes, that's yeah. That's I don't have point. the Muhammad hijab. Your sick sound effect because I'm a Christian, so all I have are, are, are nice, sweet sound effects like this. Hallelujah. 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 And speaking of awesome uh, sounds like that, turns out Richard Dawkins is a fan of like uh, cathedrals, so architecture, <laughs> and uh, I guess uh, various songs. Not so much the whole God and uh, Jesus dying on the cross and things like that, but architecture and some some you know Christmas song, Christmas carol. I think he likes all that stuff, and not so much the uh, mosques or Islamic calls to prayer. So we're mm -hmm. starting to get a feel for uh, our good friend Richard Dawkins. By the way, what's your what do you what do you what's your real view on like Richard Dawkins? Like, uh, like on a scale well, of on a scale of one to ten of of people you like, uh, someone you really 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 like, like me would be like ten, and then someone you can't absolutely can't stand, like Ali Dawa, that would be down there like a like a one or or a Kikachu or something like that. Where do you put like Richard Dawkins on there? All right. Now, I, I didn't want to be uh, open about it, but since you asked me to be more, be honest about it, my honest views on Richard Dawkins, I'll have to say it. Um, I haven't really thought about it in terms of a scale from one to ten. So I don't really know what to answer to that question. But uh, to be honest, I, uh, he is probably above five in the positive on the positive side. I mean, he's a he's a very very good guy. I would say, and a uh, very nice speaker and very good educator and uh, smart man, good man, and all that. 
of course, there are certain things that I that, that he says or does that I don't uh, always agree with. Mm -hmm. And he is still kind of a part of that whole uh, new atheist trend. But also, it seems like either uh, grew out of it or refused to adopt certain things uh, that the movement in recent times adopted, depending on how you see it. For example, he has been, um, he, he has he has never backed down on the whole uh, being against Islam thing, no matter what people say. Yeah, uh, Mehdi, Mehdi says that Dawkins always assured him that he, he his problem is is not with Islam, it's just religion. Yeah, yeah, and and th then that is true. Like Richard Dawkins, he he will say, as far as I um, know of him. Uh, also from his book, he, he will say that religion altogether is a problem, but he did have a change of heart lately. There was also, I don't know if it was a year ago or two, where he basically said that um, maybe the decline of Christianity in the West was not the best thing for society in the face of a religion like Islam. That was, actually, that was actually 2012. He saw it before the other... Because we, we've talked about we've talked about this a lot in the past. I, I, I pointed out like atheists in the 80s and 90s were basically, hey, I don't need that. But hey, if that helps y'all, you know, uh, awesome. And then it's after it's in the early 2000s when the new atheism takes off. And they're like, no, we have to be aggressive against this stuff. We have to go out and like so they became like sort of like evangelistic. Like, no, we have to convert everyone uh, to to atheists or, or deconvert people from Christian, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, but they became very aggressive uh, towards it, and then <clears throat> you ended up with people, yeah, yeah, yeah. Religion in general is bad, but then it was, I mean, interestingly, it was some, it was the the new atheists at the popular level were the ones who were saying, no, we have to be blasting away at uh, all religions equally, or they would. It was quite common for them to to even focus on Christianity, mainly because they're in the West and they're encountering Christians. Um, but it was the leaders of the new atheism. So I'm thinking specifically of um, <clears throat> Dawkins and uh, Sam Harris. Although I suspect, I suspect if I went through some uh, some Christopher Hitchens clips, I'd find some of the same things. But like Sam Harris year, years ago said, uh, hey, you know, there are all sorts of bad ideas and stuff, but Islam is the mother load of bad ideas. So he, uh, <laughs> he in so he had Islam in a different category from other things. But, yeah, it was I think it was it was like 2011, 2012 or 2013 when it was a it was a, he was being interviewed in an article. And that's when he said Dawkins said, I have mixed feelings about the decline of Christianity because I think it may have been a bulwark against something worse. And so there it's like, oh, I don't believe in Christianity. I'm not a fan of Christianity, but Christianity may be, it may have been performing some role that is protecting even people like me from something else. And you, hey, you know, it's interesting. I, I think there's a reason that Dawkins caught on to that before a lot of other people in the new atheist movement. He's a biologist. Now he's a he's an evolutionary biologist, but in the course of studying biology, he would have taken ecology. He would have taken ecology, mm -hmm. and I th I think of terms as like uh, ideologies and values and uh, traditions in a society, like as parallel to things that I studied when I took ecology. So ecology is like a you know, you got an ecosystem, you got, uh, uh, I should use examples here at some point, but, um, it looks like, it looks like a, a web. It looks like a web of connections. So they'll have a dot and this is some species and this species eats this and this and that, but it gets eaten by this. And so you, it's this web of, co of complex relationships. But what happens is an ecosystem over time. So you can think of like a, a forest. Let's say you got a forest and that's a, that's its own separate little ecosystem. So you've got, you've got animals running around, you've got birds in the trees, you've got the trees, you've got the grass and so on. You've got insects. And eventually you get a kind of equilibrium because if one thing becomes too dominant, it will eat up all its food supply and it will start dying off. And so, so it's, things end up in a kind of ecosystem um, uh, kind of harmony. 
an invasive species is something that comes in from outside and as something else can come in from outside and it doesn't have any natural predators there. And if it eats the same things other things are, are eating, it can uh, do very well and just take just take over. And so you can have an ideology that comes from outside when you had a, a kind of a. Uh, uh, you had a kind of harmony in the ecosystem and then an invasive species comes in from outside and just wreaks havoc on it. And sometimes humans do this deliberately. So introducing rabbits into Australia is a, is a common example of an invasive species. Uh, British Br Europeans moved down to Australia and they said, hey, you know what would be cool here that you don't have? European rabbits. Then we could hunt them and then we could you know, have fun hunting them and stuff. Uh, rabbits like destroyed the ecosystems because rabbits multiply very, very rapidly. They eat up all the they eat up all the things, all the vegetation that other things would have been eating. But the rabbits multiply much faster. So they eat up all the food. And then the other things that were eating that food. Now they have nothing to eat because the rabbits uh, are, are uh, multiply much more rapidly. Anyway, you got situations like this. And. If you're a biologist and you understand uh, ecosystems and how they work and what an invasive species will do to an ecosystem, you can start thinking of, you can start drawing parallels between what would an invasive ideology look like and what sort of havoc would that, would that, uh, uh, would that wreak. And so you have like people like in, it, there've been all these examples of people like the, there'll be poisonous snakes on an island. Oh, we really don't like those poisonous snakes. So what will we do? Let's bring in some mongooses, right? Those things eat snakes. So you bring those in, you bring those in to deal with the snake problem. Well, they will deal with the snake problem. They'll chomp up, they'll eat up all the snakes. But a mongoose also eats like birds and chickens and stuff like that. So it, it will then start eating up everything else once it's eaten the snakes. And so, and then the birds that the mongoose will eat. Now, those birds did things like dropping seeds on other parts of that. So it, it, it messes up the entire ecosystem. And the point is, anyway, point is people think, oh, there, here's something, no here's point. something. Yeah, there's a point. It's, oh, I don't like this snake. Let me get rid of this snake. How do I do that? Oh, let me do that. And you don't realize that this is all connected and you change one thing, you're changing, you're changing everything. And you bring in some other thing and you're also changing everything. And what I'd like to say is what's happening right now in the West, if we're thinking of, a, of, of uh, uh, Western culture, Western civilization as a parallel to an ecosystem in a forest, what's happening right now in, in eco e ecological terms would be the equivalent of a forest fire, like burning everything down. What happens when you burn everything down? All the things that took centuries to grow, these would represent like the long standing traditions and so on. All these like trees in the forest, they get burned down. What spreads after the forest fire? Well, whatever sort of replicates most most rapidly, and that might just be like various kinds of weeds and stuff like that. And so weeds can spread very rapidly and they choke out, they take, they take over all the soil and you don't have the trees anymore because they can't, they can't grow anymore. So <clears throat> I'm glad uh, you mentioned weeds because, uh, during this whole monologue, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, is David Wood high right now? Um, no, this is brilliant stuff. I'm spitting the super hot knowledge. This is, I'm spitting total, okay. total hot fire here. Okay. Uh, ma matter of fact, I'm going to, I will probably make a video explaining what's going on in Western civilization in ecological terms. Because that's mm -hmm. the only way anyone's going to understand it. The, hey, the other the uh, side note, side note, uh, you can have the same impact as an invasive species with a species that's already in the ecosystem, but it's it's kind of small and it can't overtake everything until you get some catastrophic event like a forest fire. And then the this minor thing can then take over as long as it's it spreads rapidly and so on. So. Long story short, you take out the main traditions in a society, like the trees, burn them all to the ground. Then something that's coming in from, from outside can replicate very rapidly. And some weird thing that replicates rapidly from within can then take over. That's what's going on right now. Everyone got mm -hmm. that? Yes. Hey, everyone got that. That was a good point. Yeah. And so I, it, that's just a theory that Dawkins, because he never said anything about this, but I'm thinking, like, I noticed that as... I noticed the connections there when you when you're reading the descriptions of invasive species. And I, I don't know how you wouldn't think of ideologies, because it's like if something comes in and it replic if a species comes in that replicates faster uh, and doesn't have any natural opponents in that ecosystem, then it can it can it could just like wreak, wreak having you think, oh, well, you know, in the West, we've got Christians, we've got atheists. And Christians and atheists know how to argue with each other and stuff. You come in, in, Islam comes in and you've got the highest birth rates on the planet and 
it doesn't re- no one really knows much about Islam because we're not we haven't been competing with Islam. So people don't know about Islam, which allows Dawa guys to come in and just uh, win converts left and right based on deception because no one knows what they're talking about. It's like a, it's a very obvious parallel. But also when, when he says things like I think it may have been a bulwark against something else, you can have some sort of species or something like that in an ecosystem. You think I don't like that. Nevertheless, that species is keeping something else at bay that would be even an even bigger problem for you if that thing weren't keeping it in check. And so anyway, uh, that's my theory on uh, Dawkins. OK, you got that now? Have you been yes. enlightened? No, pe- people are saying that I'm blurry. I'm not blurry on here on this on uh, in the on the interface of this ecam here. I'm pretty you're not, sharp. You're not blurry for here some either. reason. For some reason, I'm blurry on the stream, and I'm not sure how exactly and why exactly that is happening. Might be something with the connection uh, from David to YouTube. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, guys, yeah, guys, I'm looking at him right now. He is crystal clear where I'm looking at him. So yeah, that is not yeah. whatever that whatever is going on. It is not him. So stop complaining because there's nothing we can do about it. Stop whining. I also just yeah, I also just went to the bathroom and I looked into the mirror and I was perfectly sharp. There yeah. is no problem there either. Yeah. Uh, so, so there, guys, quit being racist. They uh, quit being racist, indeed. Um, very here's racist. the thing, David. Here's the thing. Um, for many years, this is not necessarily something that comes up in in America, I guess. But uh, in America, for ex- uh, in in Europe, for example, when people talked about uh, the the waves of immigration, uh, especially immigration from Muslim countries, um, one argument that was brought up quite often was well we do we need the immigrants we need the immigrants because they help the economy uh because our local population our native population doesn't want to work in specific jobs uh in specific sectors and specific industries so uh the immigrants will fill that gap they will be here and they will uh be a solution to the economy but i don't know maybe maybe somebody should have told them maybe somebody should have told them along that way while that plan was ongoing that it's probably not the best idea to mix Mm. distant cultures with entirely different beliefs in such a way as it has been done Mm -hmm. yeah and again going back to yeah going back to sort of like uh, loosely ecological because the point is i'm not even talking about things being true or not true here i'm talking about Things working and wor- things working in a society, and in general, Western nations, whatever whatever the cause is, they tended uh, to become uh, very prosperous nations. The United States became the most powerful and prosperous nation the world's ever seen. It depends. On, I mean, you, you could say you could give various. Char- I'm just thinking in terms of like uh, gross national product and thing like that. The, the United States became extremely uh, prosperous. And so you had Western nations and they reach a, a, a sort of a pretty, pretty uh, amazing heights of uh, prosperity and so on. And then you get all these ideas coming out that says, hey, all the basically all the foundations of society, whether that's ideology or, or values or traditions or whatever it is, we have to destroy all of those things and then we'll get someplace better. Now, I'm sitting here thinking, going, hmm. There's all sorts of ways to run countries, all sorts of values that you can have. Humans have had all sorts of ideas, ideologies over the centuries. Whatever the case, whatever you think is the cause, Western nations tend to become really powerful and and prosperous. And now you're saying, hey, let's let's level all the foundations of Western civilization, get rid of all of them, and then things will get better. And I'm just sitting here thinking, what could you possibly what could you possibly know? How, how could you possibly know that things are going to get better when you level the foundations like it, like across the board? Everything. Everything that has been a longstanding tradition, you have to destroy it. And then what's going to happen? Well, it's going to get better. What are you basing that theory on? Because everything you're saying, change it to. Other nations have tried that, and those other nations uh, tend to be pretty darn crappy lots of times. So anyway. There is a factor, too, which is, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the, with the term, uh, it's called the Great Divergence or the European Miracle, uh, or depending on how you describe it or define it, uh, where in the 19th century, specifically in the, in the 1800s, uh, so Europe is generally before that prosperous compared to neighboring cultural groups. But in the 1800s, Europe suddenly starts uh, a massive massive development 
massive uh, prosperity, massive success phase, and uh, just leaves much of the surrounding world behind and skyrockets in production in uh, quality of life, um, in health, in lots of different things, which eventually eventually leads to uh, Europe in the 20th century becoming a um, everyone's favorite destination to move to and to live because it has left the whole world behind in terms of success and people and there are different theories on why exactly that happened and what exactly contributed to that uh, some of the things are uh, the new world some are um, the freedoms to the, the liberal um, social cultural but also economic aspect capitalism successful Western capitalism competition is one of the factors which doesn't really exist. Mm -hmm. Uh, in many parts of the world, and so on. But suddenly, after all of that success, after all of this success, you think, oh, you know what? Let's have these other people come over here, and let's just include their ideas into ours, specifically. Why are you using your Norman Finkelstein? Are you subtly suggesting that this is a Jewish plot or something? Specifically from places that are terribly underdeveloped and unsuccessful, let's import them all here and adopt their ideas into our successful society. What could possibly go wrong? And this yeah, is where we are. Yeah, that uh, that whole thing, it, it somehow became a, like one of the things that happened in Western civilization was it became so successful that we kind of go around thinking that everyone is like that. That's been one of the that's been one of the dumbest, one of the dumbest conclusions ever is because everyone you run into in the West shares some, some common features. We've, we've jumped to the conclusion that therefore other people are the same elsewhere. And, and people, people in Afghanistan, while they may be oppressed by some regime or something like that, at the end of the day, they're, they're the same as us. And you don't, you don't find out until much later that no oopsie oopsie this guy doesn't this guy doesn't think at all like i do this guy that just killed his daughter for dressing the wrong way right here in germany maybe he doesn't think the same way i do no all cultures are the same all cultures are to be respected i'm glad i'm glad uh, i'm glad we can we can agree completely on that all right we're gonna go ahead and watch the uh we're gonna go ahead and watch the uh the first uh we have a couple quick uh go through a couple quick super chats real quick that are just uh brief before we get into any actual questions, if the but trajectory go continues as it is uh do you think it is going to continue as it is what the trajectory yeah definitely okay good ap Let's you feeling them. better chicken soup and oranges that is good that is scientifically verifiable chicken soup thank and you. oranges thank you i trust science you see the curse of allah to be forever late that is true wouldn't it be funny if like if it was a curse of Allah, like he's punishing us by making us routinely five to seven minutes late. <laughs> uh, I love you, David. And of course, AP too. And we love you. Cleforn. Cleforn. Uh, David, ETA on epic response to myth vision. Uh, probably next week we'll get to that. Inshallah. I still have to watch that. I was, what's funny is earlier I tweeted, uh, Islam is the solution to the world's problems. And I completely forgot it, that I tweeted that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I responded to it and I go, after after hundreds of hours of careful research, I've concluded that Islam is 100% right about women. <laughs> but then the comments, they don't get it, right? <laughs> Apparently people don't. <laughs> there are people who don't understand April Fool's Day in the world and they flip out over things. <laughs> Like, guy, seriously, if you ever heard me say, you know, after careful research, I've concluded that Islam is 100% right about women. Uh, yeah, anyway. It's funny. <laughs> uh, Daily Dose of Wisdom had an astrophysicist on that shared how stupid he found the Quran and its creation story and how the Bible is better. Hmm. Might have to check that out. Very Islamophobic. 100% correct. Uh, favorite chocolates, Cadbury eggs. Man, I don't eat that stuff. You eat Cadbury eggs? What? Who? You eat Cadbury Ca eggs? What in the world is a Cadbury guy's egg? Guys asking about. You never had a Cadbury egg, the chocolate egg that's filled with a. They always had the Cadbury bunny. You know, this guys, this is uh, like actually traumatic. Uh, back then, I, I was uh, 
So we were we were very poor. West Virginia Trailer Park. Oh. And they always had the Cadbury egg commercials on. No matter how much I wanted one, my mom would never get me one. <laughs> she would never get me a Cadbury. It looked delicious when you got the little bunny and it opens up and it's got the yolk in the middle. But it's a, anyway, my mom would never get me. It was years before I actually got to try one. It was, it was pretty good, but you know, it had been built up so much in my mind. You, you imagine you're sitting here watching this on the commercial and no one will, no one in the world will actually get you one of these delicious eggs. Don't worry, David. The next time we meet, I will give you, I will give you some of those. What's, what's it called again? Cadbury eggs. Cadbury eggs. Yes. No, I've had some since then. I'm not the biggest fan in the world, but when I was a kid and this is looking really delicious and no one on the planet will actually give me one or. And I'd already been punished for stealing stuff that I wasn't allowed to, uh, to no one would buy me. So I just, okay, I'll just take it and put it in my pocket. And then I got in trouble for that. And then I wasn't allowed to do that. Anyway. Can you boil them? You could boil a Cadbury egg. It's just going to, you know, <laughs> it'll melt down to its pure delicious components. It's been nasty. All right, let's go ahead and jump into a video of AP's hero, Richard Dawkins. This is the clip that's circulated on... This is the short clip that circulated on Twitter. I also have the full interview, which wasn't much longer. It's uh, seven or eight minutes or whatever. I have not watched the longer clip, so I don't know what's in there. I did watch this last night. So here is Richard Dawkins, and he's apparently asked a question about all the Ramadan lights in the UK and so on. So anyway, here's everyone's favorite, favorite atheist, Richard Dawkins. Well, I must say, I was slightly horrified to hear that Ramadan is being promoted instead. I do think that we we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I love his choice of words that he was horrified. <laughs> I was horrified. Horrified. <laughs> Is immediately going there. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a believer, but there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so, you know, I, I love hymns and Christmas carols, and um, I I sort of feel at home. Hymns and Christian and Christmas carols. And I, if I recall correctly, he does mention cathedrals. So it's architecture <laughs> and songs. It's just, I don't know, there's something funny about it to me. Like, I really love the the structures and the music I hear. It's not the whole God and Jesus thing, but you know, the structures that they build. And then uh, <laughs> something. It's, it's funny. Cause he's like, he's an old, he's an old man, but it's like, I don't know. There's something like childlike about it. Like I like, I like the music, mommy. <laughs> How can you not love this guy? It's like, um, <laughs> I, I, I have my disagreements uh, and, you know, I, I have my the, the respect that I feel towards certain uh, elders of the new atheist uh, community. Uh, but this this guy is just, uh, I wish he was my grandpa. <laughs> grandpa Dawkins. <laughs> does he does he have grandkids? I've not, I don't know anything about his family. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. That'd I be interesting. Never asked That'd be him. interesting. Yeah. He would be kind of fun. Yeah. Anyway. In the Christian ethos, I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. Why is the camera moving around the entire time? I don't Do you know. notice that? Is yeah, that in the original? Yeah. I believe so. I believe yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, it's true that statistically the number of people who actually believe in Christianity is going down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I'm happy with that. But I would not be happy if... Um, for example, we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches. Um, so I, I count myself a cultural Christian. I think it wouldn't matter if we, certainly if we substituted any alternative religion, that would be tr truly dreadful. Well, which brings um, me to, to my supplementary point, which is that, as we know, church... Isn't that weird? Like, it's, it's very good that belief in Christianity is is uh, is declining in Great Britain, but... It would be a shame if we lost all our beautiful churches. It's like, what do you think those churches are for, dude? You know what I mean, like, <laughs> like, like, it's like he, it's like he wants these this world where people stop believing in Christianity, but they keep the churches and the singing going. <laughs> they want to keep we want to keep the churches and the hymns going, but just a bunch of people who don't believe in it. Anyway, <laughs> his his point is. I mean, I I understand his point. I get his point. It's just it's just that uh, he personally uh, considers a religious belief in and of itself 
um, something that should be that should be uh, left in the past and that that humans should move on from. Uh, it is it is he said he so he believes it is false and uh, holding on to falsehood as if it was truth is not great for society. However, that being said, the cultural aspect of having the churches and the Christian culture and um, how it still remains in terms of buildings, practices, holidays, and all of that is something that you can appreciate, that you can truly appreciate, even if you don't necessarily like like the beliefs or uh, if you don't necessarily believe in it, or even if you don't want to have the belief, even if you don't want to be surrounded with the belief, you would like to be surrounded with what it, ha what it has left behind. I, I feel that way too. I, I appreciate Christian culture. I appreciate how it, how it, how it d developed and what it gave society. And uh, you can appreciate that, especially if you compare it to a culture like Islamic culture, which is grotesque in comparison. Yeah, what, what I'm saying is like, I don't know how you have it both ways. Like they, hey, want to want to go after the beliefs, but keep things that are produced because of the beliefs. Keep those sort of sort of propped up. It doesn't seem like they're going to continue. They'll continue for a while. And, and matter of fact, this is I was talking about uh, when I was with uh, Harris uh, a little while back on his show. I started talking about like imagine imagine a religion that was based on frog worship, and so since they worship frogs. They developed this frog worship culture where as part of their rituals, they hop that they hop around like frogs and they hop down and sit on lily pads and they eat flies. Sounds good. And suppose they then people start people start to reject some people start to reject the, the frog worshiping. And so then the attacks from the true frog worshipers would be, ah, these people are going to destroy our society. They're going to destroy our culture and stuff. Look at them. They, they don't worship the frog. And then like the. Uh, the frog, the frog people, atheists, uh, they'd be like, what are you talking about? We can we can continue all this stuff. We can we can continue, you know, hopping down to the lily pad and sitting on the lily pad and eating flies. We could do that stuff, too. So we can keep doing that. It's like, yeah, but that was there was a reason for there was a reason for that under the frog worship. There was a reason for these behaviors. Yes, you can still continue the behaviors, but they're not connected to anything now. So it seems like they're going to die out over time. So. In a, in a parallel fashion to what we're talking about right now, you've got churches and they were made for a purpose and the hymns, they were made for a purpose. And you say, I like all that stuff. And I like certain other features of Christian societies, but, you know, get rid of the Christianity, get rid of thinking, you know, taking this stuff seriously and keep the stuff that I like. And it's like, well, the stuff that you liked about it was connected to that, to the belief that it's true. Once you strip that away, it seems like the stuff you like is also going to go away over time. So I, I'm legitimately interested in how these guys like, How's this going to work out? Like, how does this work in your mind where you're going to keep the things that you like and 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 get rid of the thing that sort of held those things in place? Like you can uh, like you can will those things to keep them in place, even though you've stripped the foundation like churches are going to continue forever and continue belting out hymns and so on, even after people don't believe in this stuff anymore. Anyway. <clears throat> Anyway, the, the, the point is, I think uh, I think atheists, lots of atheists are 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 coming to realize what Dawkins saw in back in 2012, that, huh, it's we thought we thought the problem is, is just religion in general and we get rid of it and then people are going to become more rational. And no, actually, people aren't becoming more rational. People are losing their minds. And it does. It, it, it's it's ba it's basically like in their minds there was do this and this will happen, and then people do this and then this didn't happen, and now they're like, wait, what just happened? We thought if we did this, we thought if we you know blasted away at religion, that the more we blasted away at religion, the more rational the population is going to become, and it doesn't. It, I don't see any observable observable features of the world that are that are becoming better and more rational right now, despite the fact that we've been blasting away at religion. So it's like they're sort of having to rethink their theories and i don't think they figured out what to do yet i don't they want to continue blasting away at religion but they're 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 the the observations that they predicted are not are, are apparently being falsified so they, it's like they're going to have to rethink what their what their grand plan is or something i, I think actually uh, so richard dawkins has been quite consistent in uh, in in his in his outlook here um he's also called himself a 
cultural Christian, for example, in the past, uh, it's it's not it's not something new. It's it might be more pronounced now and more uh, more public. But he did say it in the past. Uh, he did say that he appreciates the Christian uh, culture and the things that Christianity gave. The the issue is um, with, with Richard Dawkins. I think he was always aware that um, if you if you fight the you know if you fight religion and you want society to eventually move on from it and to secularize or uh, become atheistic, become non-religious more and more, um, that there are downsides to it, that there are things about it that make you a little bit sad or melancholic, mm. however you want to describe it. Um, and he has been actually voicing that, and he has been he has been quite open about that, that it's not something that is necessarily nice, it's just something that is... Mm. Uh, that is necessary and that comes with time. However, he is one of the few ones who point out one very obvious big problem that people don't seem to think about enough in the atheist sphere, which is uh, it's one thing to change society and to uproot it and to uh, lose the Christian culture, which there is a lot to appreciate about. But it's not like it, it won't just go as the regular average atheist thinks it goes where, oh, everyone will just lose religion and people will all become atheists and uh, everything will be happy. No, there is a different culture at the moment which tries to push very hard to take over and replace the dominant religion that you are dealing with. And that culture, that religion is certainly a significantly worse problem than Christianity has ever been. And Richard Dawkins is one of the few people who actually honestly and consistently talk about it and point it out and so many others ignored i, I saw i saw atheists who were uh, angry about what richard about, about this whole thing about this whole clip they were complaining about this about this clip and they were calling it uh kind of islamophobic and this and that people are stupid wake up and listen to what the guy is actually saying listen to why he has these concerns listen to the concerns that he's actually voicing listen to what is going on in the islamic world as opposed to what is going on in the christian world in the christian world all you have to complain about is oh there are some christians who are pushing christian policies oh some christians they believe in things that are not true that's it that's not the problem in the Islamic world. In the Islamic world, pe people's problems, pe problem with Islam is not, oh, you know, they believe in things that are not true, or they try to push these and these few policies. No, it's we have no free speech. We have no freedom. We don't have the right to exist. We are killed. We are tortured. We have, we have our rights taken away. We are lynched, brutally murdered, and so on. This is what Islam is. All your problems, all your concerns that you have with Christianity, which you want to get rid of and slowly, slowly work and talk away, those are non-problems. Those are non-issues compared to what Islam is. When Islam comes to your door, you will have a real problem. And yeah, if you uh, haven't learned about it so far, you will be you will be bamboozled. <laughs> this kind of ties into what I was saying and that uh like things have been sort of so successful in the West. Keep in mind when I say so I'm not saying there aren't problems. Of course you have problems and so on. But I mean compared to lots of the problems that most people had to deal with over the centuries, the problems that people in the West have to deal with are comparatively pretty insignificant. Um, yeah. But because because you don't have to focus on lots of the problems that other people in the rest of the world have to focus on or or the the problems that people in the past had to deal with, you get to focus on the things that are problems for you, which for people in the past would have been completely insignificant, but you can become obsessed with them. Oh, we have to deal with this, this small thing. Really? Is that really messing up your life? No, but I have to, it's on social media. I have to, I have to freak out about this. And so 
Yeah, people are freaking out over things which would have been very minor concerns to most people uh, over the matter of fact, through lots of the problems that we have to deal with people in past generations would have been like that serious. That's what you're complaining about. That's what that's what bothers you right now. My goodness, you're misgendering my, me. My, my goodness, the wrong pronouns. I had 13 kids. Eight of them died as as in, in infant. Right. These are the problems we're dealing with in the past. You, you're complaining because this guy said this thing that you don't like. And that's like that's the end of the world for you. You have to destroy that person's life right now. Like what, what is wrong with you? Uh, they but say, yeah. I will pray for you. That's so offensive. They yeah. So sky daddy. Oh, no. we become, we become fixated on all these little things all over the place <clears throat> and kind of, uh, and don't realize how, how bad things can actually get very, very quickly. Uh, something else that we've talked about in the past is that, <clears throat> cause it's funny. Cause we're talking about, you're pointing out how Dawkins seems to understand uh, things a little bit better than than some others, but the British, the British in general, <clears throat> and by extension the United States and Canada, were always different from the Germans from the 18th uh, from the Germans in the 1800s, and that they understood the implications. Right? They understood. Hey, guys, we're moving to a different phase in human history, and we're getting rid. We're getting rid of what has been an important fixture of Western civilization for a long time. We're getting rid of some of these things. And guys, we we better figure out how to replace that because you don't realize the implications of what's going on right now. This is big. What's going on right now is huge. And if you don't figure out how to replace these things, things are going to collapse. And so let's focus on that. And the British were like, what are you talking about? We'll just get rid of all these things and then uh, everything will be better. And they're finding out the hard way. Crap, Nietzsche had a point. He did. Yep. He had a bunch of dumb points, but he had, it, it's weird. He's like a mixture of some of the most brilliant points ever and some of the most dumbest points ever. It's like a combination. I guess it... it, it so many people don't understand what exactly the whole uh, phrase "God is dead" is about, and I wish there would there was like a I don't know, maybe you should do it uh, do a basic 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 video intro to to, to Nietzsche to, yeah to educate everyone on what exactly Nietzsche was lamenting about and what he was complaining about and what what the whole "God is dead" thing was about because it's a very crucial, very significant thing that people should understand. Yeah. Oh yeah. He yeah he was. On on that stuff, he was he was brilliant. I mean, he saw yeah. it. He saw it. There's something something about his brain allowed him to see something that other people did not see at all. And it turns out he was he was correct. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's continue with this. A couple of do you do virtual interviews? How do I reach you, D Wood? Um, I don't know. That kind of depends. But you can check my email if you go to answeringislam.net and go to the author's page. You can get my email there. Uh, in your last stream, you forgot to mention the death blow. I didn't forget to mention the death blow. You talking about the stream with Etisham? I didn't forget. I just don't bring out everything in one show. And that's how you what keep future shows row? going. Death blow. Oh, I thought you were talking about death row. Death blow sounds cool. Death row records sounded cool, but death blow records. Someone should have come out with death blow records right after death row records. AP is even late on Atheist Day. Can't make this up. It is. It, oh, yeah. I forgot to wish everyone out there a uh, uh, happy International Atheist Day on this very important day, April 1st. <laughs> All right. Let's get back to Dawkins here. Attendance is plummeting. Church attendance but the building, plummeting. The erection of mosques across Europe, I think 6,000. <laughs> she said erection. I know you were thinking. I knew you were thinking. I could tell. I could look at you and tell what you were thinking. <laughs> You've been a, I've been around you long enough to know. <laughs> it's just pause in, 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 in the worst moment where she just starts speaking and then she mentions erection. Oh, see, like, I know. I, I know. Under I know. construction, and there are many more. I mean, are being planned. So, do you oh, let me back up a little bit. So she's talking about uh, 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 church attendance plummeting and mosques are being uh, built. Yeah, stop being under construction, and there are many more. I mean, are being. You need attention, AP. But the building, <laughs> the erection of mosques across Europe, there I think six thousand are under construction, and there are lots of erections in <laughs> mosques. <laughs> Anymore. Yes, but only if a child bride comes. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you, Matt? 
Come on, get your mind out of the gutter. Okay. It's so funny how, how David always uses me as human shield to, to then enjoy the humor of this. That's what I do. That's what I do. That's why they call me the Christian Hamas. Right, which is that, as we know, church attendance is plummeting, but the building, the erection of mosques across Europe, I think 6,000 are under construction and there are many more, I mean, are being planned. So do you think, do you regard that as a problem? Do you think that matters? Yes, I do, really. I mean, I, 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 I don't, I, I have to choose my words carefully. I mean, I, if I had to choose between Christianity and Islam, I choose Christianity every single time. And now ask him about uh, 1.6 billion Muslims and the cow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back this thing up here. It's a problem. Do you think that matters? Yes, I do. Really, I mean, I, 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 I don't, I. I have to choose my words carefully. I mean, I, if I had to choose between Christianity and Islam, I choose Christianity every single time. I mean, it seems to me to be a, a fundamentally decent religion um, in a way that I think Islam is not. I think you're going to have ah, to explain yes. why you say that. Yes. <laughs> you like that? Yes. Oh, you like yes. that, AP? Yes, I love it. I, I would say anyone who is confronted or who is asked this question and who doesn't respond with Christianity every single time, there's probably something wrong with that person. Yeah, I've seen lots of people saying this. I've seen, I think I've seen Harris say things like that. I've seen, uh, what was it, Secular Outpost a while back said the same thing. Um, and really, I don't know. <laughs> the, the point I made in a tweet, like late last night or early this morning, whatever it was, was Muslims agree, <laughs> like everyone agrees, Muslims want to move to nations that have been shaped by Christianity. You don't see the reverse. I mean, there can be individuals who like decide, hey, I really want to go to Pakistan or something like that. It can happen. But in general, people move from the Muslim world to, to Christian nations, not, not vice versa. So even Muslims agree, hey, I would rather live in a, in a country shaped by uh, Christianity <laughs> than by Islam. Now, what's amazing is when you, when you point that out to them, it's always, ah, but, you know, they're not doing Islam right in my country. That's why I had to get out of there. And so, OK, so even let, take that take that idea seriously. Islam just doesn't work. That's what you're saying, right? You, you can have you can have populations of 95, 98, 99 percent Muslim populations and Islam still doesn't work. So there's they're not doing it right. So somehow Islam just doesn't work right in, in these nations. OK, fine. So Islam doesn't just doesn't work. And, and it makes you want to get the heck out of those countries and, and go to other countries. But anyway, the point is, Richard Dawkins says it. He says what we all know. Okay, guys, keep in mind, I'm not talking, I'm not even talking about what's true. You could be, you could have a completely different, uh, different country with a completely different religion or something like that. If it ends up, if it ends up being a country where people want to live in such that even people from the Muslim world are like, oh, I want to go to that country right there. Then why would it be completely unacceptable to say, "Hey, if I have to choose between a country that is, you know, between an ideology that produces this or an ideology that produces that, I'm going with this because it just empirically verified. I prefer this. I prefer this. Therefore, I I prefer the ideology that produces this rather than the ideology that produces that. Why would it, I don't even know why that would be a horrible, horrible thing to say? Yeah, I choose the cow. Yeah. If I have to choose. Between Saudi Arabia and a cow, Christian cow, <laughs> <laughs> I will choose the Christian cow. Dawkins, why is Islam profound? Well, the, the way the fundamentally way, the, not decent like Christianity. Yes, I mean the the the, the way women are treated. I mean Christianity is not great about that. For, uh, it's had its problems with female vicars and female bishops and things. But Th this this ties into what you were just saying, that we can become focused on problems that and and we we become fixated on that problem. Like this is a problem and you may view it as a problem. The point there are worse problems that you're not familiar with because they're not they're not they're no longer problems for you because those have been kind of weeded out of society. And so, yeah, what you what can you say about a society well, where you have tons of people? It's like it's like uh 
yeah, there are problems with Christianity. Yes, I agree there are problems with Christianity. However, if we compared the problems with Christ, uh, the problems that we have with Christianity with the problems that we have with Islam, the Christianity problems are very, very small. They are non-issues. They don't matter. They are tiny. Maybe in some world, after we are done de dealing with the problems of Islam, we could look at those problems or we could deal with those problems on the side without making it look like both sides are the same. It is. It has to be said, Islam is significantly worse. And every, every, every aspect that you go into, Islam ends up being significantly worse at making Christianity look like a complete non-problem. That's the point. That's the issue. And I wish more people opened their eyes and their minds and saw this and dealt with this the way that Richard Dawkins has been pointing it out for quite a while. And he's not the only one. Sam Harris has been saying that, as you said, uh, Christopher Hitchens has, has, has pointed that out. He has said that, uh, that the issues with Christianity are, are, are nothing compared to Islam, that Islam is the absolute worst. Uh, generally, the, the, the more educated people in the, the, the leadership of this atheist sphere over the decades were were aware of this problem they have been aware of it and they have been talking about it it's just that the average atheist uh doesn't seem to understand what is actually going on in the world they seem to be uh they they seem to not realize that christianity is not really that big of a problem compared to islam which you might have seen as a problem that is uh an issue somewhere else in the world but it is coming it is coming. It is more and more becoming part of your reality. So it's probably time to wake up. Pretty, pretty good time to wake up. Yeah, so guys, here, as far as what Richard Dawkins is talking about right here, uh, so he's saying Christianity, he's, he's making a pretty bold claim for atheists in the West. Christianity is better than Islam when it comes to women. And what he points out, and I'll, I'll go ahead and add to it. I'll go ahead and add to it. These are the issues that you could be concerned about as far as Christianity's impact on women and the Christian view of women. <clears throat> if people are taking Christianity very seriously, yes, it would be common to say that uh, women can't be bishops or something like that. Women, women can't have, women don't have the, the role of, of bishop or even like pastor or something like that, that would be, there'd be there are plenty of churches where they have women pastors and so on, but it would be common among, it would be, there would be lots and lots of Christians who uh, would, would, would take that view, do not have women as like your, your, your main leaders in a, in a church or so on to have that authority. You'd have that, you'd have <clears throat> uh, that in, in Christianity, everyone is submitting to someone else. Everyone is submitting to someone else. So children are submitting to their parents and so on. Uh, but you would have the idea that in some sense, women are supposed to be submitting to their husbands and the husbands are also to be, everyone is submitting to someone else in Christianity, but there would, there would be claims you, wives submit to your husbands. So you could, you could, there are lots of people who would object to that. And then the issue would be abortion. And with the abortion, it's not, ah, we hate women or something. It's, it's, uh, we believe that, that life, that what is growing in you is a human life and therefore don't kill it. So those would be those would be common things that would arise for people who are taking Christianity seriously. And what Dawkins is pointing out is okay, it's very different. In Islam, you're taking if you're taking Islam very seriously, then you're dealing with things like beating wives into submission, uh, having multiple wives. You can have uh, secret second, third, fourth wives. Uh, you can be marrying and having sex with four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old girls. You can take uh, women and girls as your as your sex captives and things like that. It's a significantly you have you have much more serious problems than this woman not being able to hold this role in a church. It's her husband can beat the crap out of her, or you know, and that's not factoring in issues like honor killings because those can be cultural. But you can defend even that very easily. Islamically, something like honor killings, where up, oh, you know, we have a death penalty for apostates, and if you're doing certain things that that I think put you in the apostate category, then then do the math on this. So anyway, he's making a very simple point that shouldn't even be controversial. It shouldn't be controversial. Hey, 
this, here's this ideology. We can look at all the things we might object to here. And here's this ideology. We look at all these things that we might object to. Hey, those things seem way worse here. Those things seem way, way worse. Huh? Like, and what would be controversial about that? I don't know. All right, a few more seconds here on this short clip. There's an active hostility to women, which is mm -hmm. promoted, I yeah. think, by the holy books of Islam. I'm not talking about individual Muslims, who, of course, are quite, quite different. But the, but the doctrine... By the way, look at, that, look at that point you just made. He's saying individual Muslims may be nice, and an individual Muslim may be the nicest husband in the world, and so on. I'm talking about the doctrines that influence things. That's, a, that's an important point. ...of Islam, the Hadith and the, and the Quran. It's fundamentally um, hostile to women, hostile to gays, um, and uh, I find that I like to live in a culturally Christian country, although I do not believe a single word of the Christian faith. There you go. Don't believe a single yeah. word of it, but I'd That's rather it. live that. By the way, that this is kind of a side note, but I'm, uh, I'm no longer an atheist, but at this point, if I were an atheist, I would be wondering, I would be wondering at that point, at this point. Yeah, you know, tw if you go back 20 years, it made perfect sense. Hey, if we just get religion out of the way and we have a so an atheistic society, then that's going to work better. At this point, I may actually be wondering if that is some sort of achievable goal, like an atheist society that is going to be stronger in, in, at standing up to Islam. Uh, that's going to be able to... Uh, I mean, you could you can you could do it in your head. You can make sense of it in your head. Yeah, we're just going to have this big atheist nation, and they're all going to be really diehard uh, atheists, and they're not going to uh, they're not going to put up with Islam and so on. It's just in the real world we are seeing that maybe it doesn't work. Maybe it doesn't work like that. Like in other words, maybe a massive group of around two billion people who believe that. They are commanded by the Almighty to take over the world. Maybe your lack of belief in something isn't a significant foundation for standing up against that kind of thing. Maybe it's not. But I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what I'd be thinking if I actually were still an atheist right now, but I don't know. <clears throat> I suspect that. Yeah. Wait, no, I am blurry. Yeah, now you are blurry. Is this your same broken, stupid camera that you broke? You broke your lens? Yeah, yeah. Why don't you get guys? Please send AP some uh, some money when you get a chance. How, how do people do that? AP, they go over to your channel. There'll be a I, link. I What's the just, best way? Hmm? I can just I can just change the lens. It's probably it's not. It's not why don't you fix your stuff, guys? Send AP some money so he can not have any excuses on why <laughs> he's all blurry all the time. Yeah. Oh boy, what is this? I wanted what to say it? something about the whole point of living in a Christian culture rather than another culture. But I will get back to it. Let me, let me let me check this out. Yeah, you do that while I take a couple of super chats. Atlas Gaming says, "Greetings from your biggest atheist fan." Yes, we all get along, and it's a, it is an interesting situation where, and you know, to be fair, I do get along with with some Muslims right now, but they're you know they tend to be uh, you know Sufis and sort of the offshoots that are also that are also on the wrong side of a. Uh, of the guys who want to conquer the world and but and everyone else can get along we can get along atheists can get along with christians can get along with jews can get along with hindus can, everyone can get along except the one group that believes they've been commanded to violently subjugate the entire world shocker 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 uh hit mm. hitchens or harris or dawkins or dillahunty preference My preference would go Hitchens in order of my preference. I like Hitchens best, then Dawkins, then Harris, then Dillahunty. Hope that clarifies things for you. Opinions on the Monty Python philosopher's soccer match. Awesome. They had the Greeks versus the Germans. Those would be the big ones. The Greeks versus the Germans. And that's what it comes down to in the history of philosophy, ladies and gentlemen. What the heck? And now your your head is giant. <laughs> giant head and blurry. It's like you're sitting here. How can I make this live stream the worst thing ever? And you're doing a great job of it. Doing a bang up job. 
Let's see. Uh, Yusuf here says, turns out when you remove Christianity without something better to bring people meaning, disunity and disaster. Yes, w to, to bring people meaning, disunity and disaster occur. And once again, I'm not when I'm talking about this, I'm not even talking about. I'm, so I'm a Christian. I believe that Christianity is true. But right. I'm not Wait, talking, you're a Christian. Yeah. But when I'm talking about this, that you have a society that's been functioning with certain things as the foundation of that society and you say do away with them yeah this this would be true of of any society that it would be true of islamic societies like if you're just going to destroy the foundations of islam what are you going to replace it with now fortunately i think islam is so disastrous that whatever you place it with is going to be better but these are still these are still concerns and so what are you replacing it with if you're replacing it with nothing then guess what? Everything's going to break up into separate groups, and then they're all going to start fighting with each other, and you're, yeah, disunity and disaster occur. We're seeing that. We're seeing that all around us. Hey, going back to this one, just so we can get your call, AP. Uh, Hitchens or Harris or Dawkins or Dillahunty? Preference. Hitchens. That's what I said. Then Dawkins. Then Harris. That's exactly what I said. You, you heard me and copied my answer. No. <laughs> you didn't hear my, you didn't hear me? I didn't hear you, no. Oh, whoa. That's funny. That's funny. We like the same shows. You don't like the song Africa. Uh, that is the only thing we've ever disagreed on. I, I hate it. I think it's a disgusting song. I like the chorus. It's banging. Uh, turns out when you... Oh, I already read that. Uh, AI, let's see. Super chat. Oh, no comment. Uh, react to the Babylon B video on what if the resurrection is a hoax? It destroys AP and his conspiracy theorist buddies. Oh, I might. Uh, oh, dang it. I wish I'd known that. I would have. Uh, I would have. Uh, we could have watched it live yesterday on Easter. I will have to check it out. <clears throat> we'll have to check that out. We'll see if it's good. Yeah. Hey, by the way, everyone remember when I completely humiliated those uh, those dudes at the Babylon Bay when I interviewed them? I humiliated them and they were just like reduced to silence. You can check that out on my channel. It's titled like David Wood destroys the Babylon Bay and they were destroyed. You should post it again. You were the, you kind of posted that in the middle of uh, deleting your other channel. Oh, or yeah, something. funny. Funny when I do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll wait till the Babylon Bee is trending one day and then I'll say, hey, you remember that time I destroyed the Babylon Bee? <laughs> Those were good times. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's jump into the actual uh, the regular clip here. We'll probably skim through the stuff we've already seen. Uh, this isn't this isn't too much longer because um, the the other one was like two minutes, two minutes and some two and a half minutes or something. Uh, but Please. we'll check out some of this, and then we want to get to uh, we want to get to Mehdi Mehdi's uh, complaints about Richard Dawkins because he exposes and destroys him. Professor Dawkins, it's very. Good to have you join us to discuss whether it matters that Christianity is playing a diminishing role in national life. Uh, well, it is funny that, hey, let's get an atheist to talk about the diminishing role of Christianity. Welcome to LBC. Thank you. And what would be your Easter message? I, I mean, I've, I've said a few things. Uh, what would be, what would you tell your the nation? Easter... <laughs> hey, hero of the new atheism, what would your message, your Easter message be? <laughs> Well, I must say, I was slightly horrified to hear that Ramadan hey, dude, is being... Hey, dude, dude, look, look. That's actually his camera. I thought someone was editing it for the clip, uh, for the for the uh, the clip that was shared on Twitter. But his camera is actually just sitting around going like this. I don't know what that is. If that's a setting or if he's got, if he's like, uh, got a camera guy who's saying, hey, just uh, keep moving the camera around. Instead, I do think that we, we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer. But there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so, you know, I, I love hymns and Christmas carols. And um, oh, so I, the I sort of... The clip we saw is from right here at the beginning. Again, I haven't watched this one. I haven't watched the longer one, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like what we're seeing here at the beginning is what is the uh, clip that was shared. So I'll probably watch a couple more seconds of this and then fast forward through it. I feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. Uh, it's true that statistically the number of people who actually believe in Christianity is going down, uh, and I, I'm happy with that. But I would not be happy if, um, for example, we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches. Um, so I, I count myself a cultural Christian. I think it would matter if we... Certainly, if we substituted any alternative religion, that would be tr truly dreadful. Have you noticed how, like, uh, 
there's a big similarity between what he's saying and what Ayan Hirsi Ali was saying. Yeah. But Ayan Hirsi Ali, and, and, and I don't know what's going on behind the scenes because she's already been going to church and having discussions and stuff like this with, with her church. So I don't know if she's actually like, like open to it or something like this where like Dawkins <clears throat> isn't, but they're very similar in both saying, hey, we're cultural Christians and we're seeing that this is... The, uh, Christianity would be better at standing against Islam maybe than some other things. Um, but they're both saying, Hey, we like Christian cult. We like, we like lots of elements of Christian cultures and we, we count ourselves cultural Christians, but I on Hersey Ali seems to be going in the, okay, so I need to become actual part of this. I may not, I may not actually believe all this stuff, but I got to become part of this. And Dawkins, no, I'm not going to become part of this. I'll call myself a cultural Christian. And I really like hymns and, and uh, cathedrals and so on. But I haven't figured out how to how to uh, make this work yet. <laughs> you better figure it out real quick. You better figure it out real quick, like Dawkins, because you don't have uh, you don't have much time. I, it's, I don't. It's mean, funny. I don't. I don't, me I, old, I don't. No, uh, I, I just want to clarify. I'm not saying because he's old. I'm saying because you got jihadis in the streets saying we're gonna uh, we're we're gonna get our way and we're gonna behead the infidels and stuff like that. I'm saying you don't you don't have a tremendous amount of time. So come up with your plan real quick. All right. What, what was that, AP? I don't know. I'm just saying, I, I, as soon as I said it, I know people are going to say, oh, you don't have much time left. He's saying you're going to die in five years. No, um, it reminds me of that whole idea, that whole uh, concept or whatever you want to call it, that when things get serious, people start choosing a side. The cow. Or people start choosing a... The cow. <laughs> Start, start cho choosing a, a, a certain a certain path, a certain side, in order uh, in preparation or in the face of this looming um, danger or looming fight or whatever it is, and um, people like Richard Dawkins and Ayan Hirsi what they are pointing out is that there is a what you could see as a as a culture war that is looming. And it is probably not very wise to just stand there and let it happen or stand there and be okay with uh, an Islamization attempt. Um, it is probably best to align with the culture that made this place so great, um, which we appreciate for which we are here. And I don't see why anyone would really have a big problem with that. Anyone except you. Yeah. Hey, check this out. Thoughts on Curb Your Enthusiasm Palestinian Chicken versus Jewish Deli episode. <laughs> R-rated, but very funny nonetheless, in my honest opinion. Shocking how it prefigured. Now, I don't remember the Jewish Deli. I remember the, uh, I've watched the Palestinian Chicken <clears throat> clip like 50 times, probably, on YouTube. Um, so that, I, yeah, that, I, that's what, I think the... The whole episode is the the point of it is that that there is a Jewish deli and that the Palestinian chicken restaurant opens next to it or close to it and they're mm -hmm. like or in place of it or something like that and people are, are outraged about it. Uh, so I th I think that is the episode. Uh, it's it's the same episode. Oh, that's interesting because I I don't I've never seen it. I just saw the clip. I just saw the clip of the Palestinian chicken. Uh, so anyway, yeah, guys, let's look up. Uh, <clears throat> it is a funny clip. AP played a little bit of it in one uh, in one show. But yeah, it's a, it's a bunch of Jewish guys going to a Palestinian <laughs> chicken place. Oh, hey, hey, you saw this, right? What the heck happened to Salwan Momika? So Visegrad posted earlier today that his body has been found dead. And mm -hmm. my response to it was, I don't take any breaking news seriously on April Fool's Day. I saw that tweet too. It, was, it said uh, his dead body has been found in Norway. I was going to say congratulations, but then uh, I was busy, so I, I didn't do that. Um, hey, what's, cr what's crazy is, so he posted that, but I've seen a bunch of muslims celebrating it already you can just go to that company, oh, alhamdulillah it's so great yeah finally he got what he deserved my, uh, my one of my my thought is that uh that stefan the guy behind visigrad is probably uh in touch with salvan mumika uh -huh. and that they might have just he probably uh, said it. it yeah he probably said hey, hey 
hey, what a great, uh, what a great uh, April Fool's prank or something like that. So that's what I think is going on too. <laughs> if it's still going on in a couple of days, then I'll then I'll uh, I'll I'll take it as interesting. I have to say, as soon as uh, as soon as Stefan posted that, what what entered my mind was there's a Polish guy making an April Fool's joke, right? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to ask him if he if he knows like how common Polish jokes were in like the 80s and 90s um, in the U.S. Like every joke, like then it became blonde jokes. But before that, it was Pol Polish jokes like, oh, Polish, they invented screen doors for submarines and stuff like that. And seat ejecting helicopters. And all that. It was about all these stupid stuff that. Uh, and I think that was connected to the war that they were so incompetent at dealing with the German invasion and so on. <clears throat> I don't know where I don't know where the idea came from that they're stupid. But, That's uh, funny. In Germany, the, the the jokes about Polish people were made, were usually about uh, how don't leave your cars unlocked around Polish people. Or really, like, like they're bad. <laughs> like that they were that they would uh, that they would steal your car or something like that. I don't know. That that was the the terrible humor that I heard when I was in Germany back in the day. Not sure if it changed meanwhile or why that even was a thing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what D Wood is saying, if the trajectory continues as it is, the invasion of so many goats and camels persist, all the world will look like North Africa and the Middle East. If the trajectory continues. Mm -hmm. David is correct. 100%. That is true. Oh, Segador said, no, it's Romanians. I think I, I think I got that. I think I heard that. What? jokes about romanians oh so and romanians are evil <laughs> not evil well lots of stereotypes about romanians because hey, of uh incidents oh, i told you i told you norm mcdonald's uh polish joke when he said he was <clears throat> his name's mcdonald but he's actually polish and he said uh so he's on like conan and he's talking about how how messed up people are with the polish with uh with the polish jokes and stuff like that he said uh he says hey one day i walked into a place and i said uh Hey, I'd like a uh, Polish sausage. So the guy says, oh, you're Polish, eh? And so I said, what? Why would you assume just because I ordered a Polish sausage that I'm that I'm Polish? If, I mean, if I'd ordered a German bratwurst, would you say, oh, you must be German? If I'd ordered French toast, would you say, oh, oh, you must be French? If I'd ordered a Belgian waffle, what would you say, oh, you must be Belgian? Why would you assume just because I ordered Polish sausage that I'm Polish? The guy said, well, first of all, this is a hardware store. <laughs> Man. Uh, uh, so the question here, do you think Gulf Arab states will liberalize? They already are. Saudi Arabia is liberalizing like crazy. Yeah, they have been. But so, so th yes, Gulf Arab states are liberalizing. But you have a very aggressive form of Islam that's spreading in Western nations right now with nothing to kind of stand in the way. What are your thoughts on it? What are you, what are you giggling at? You still, what? No, people in the chat. Uh, do you think Gulf Arab states will liberalize? That is, that is what people are hoping for and working toward. And uh, it's also happening. Saudi Arabia has been massively changing culturally. And Muslims around the world are actually quite angry about it especially religious Muslims, they're very, very outraged about it and they see it as betrayal and as perversion and travesty. However, Saudi Arabia is moving toward uh, liberalizing, adopting the Western way of life. And just, just a decade ago, it was, it was demanded that a woman dresses a certain way uh, or c covers herself up entirely. Today, there is no longer a hijab law. Uh, women are just informally asked to dress modestly. That's it. Um, you suddenly have pop. You suddenly have concerts with Iggy Azalea coming and twerking and uh, and singing about. Uh, <laughs> Wait, let me. Is that true? Goddess. She's twerking. Let me look that up to verify this. <laughs> <laughs> things true. like these are suddenly happening uh and then you have the united arab emirates that has detached itself a lot from the past and from islam already uh kuwait has become very liberal and so on so th th there is a big change happening and um 
one of the reasons might be, as people interpret, that uh, these countries were terrible countries before the whole, you know, oil success and oil richness began. And as uh, the world's dependency on oil decreases, these countries will not have much to, you know, offer. So it's probably wise to make some steps toward the future and to change and to expand and to start mixing with the rest of the world and becoming more like them instead of uh, staying crap holes and then turning back into becoming desert crap holes that nobody wants to interact with. Well, what's again, what's interesting is even as the uh, Gulf Arab states are liberalizing, you've got the people pushing for hardcore Sharia here in the uh, here in the West and talking, marching through the streets and we're going to take over. Meanwhile, meanwhile, back in Saudi Arabia, it's becoming a, an Iggy Azalea fest. It would be interesting if, like, the whole world shifted and, like, the Muslim world liberalized and the Western world became the new Muslim world. That'd be funny. That's what I think about sometimes. Be, <laughs> and then, uh, and then people like us have to move to Saudi Arabia to avoid getting yeah. our heads chopped off. They're over here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once Ali Dawa becomes the new prime minister, <laughs> that'd, be, <laughs> that'd be too funny. Man, 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 man. Bella Bella says, "David, you're the best." Um, it depends on what you mean. You can't, you have to qualify that. We can say that I'm the best at, at what I do and what I do isn't very pretty. Plus you're called Bella Bellas. Uh -huh, so, that's true. Yeah. John, the presbyter, peace be upon him. Greetings from Germany. That's good. Oh, Grüße nach Deutschland. Deutschland, Deutschland sucks. Uh, classical cleric said, <laughs> what? <laughs> Off topic, but could you use your Zionist connections to tell Ben Shapiro and Larry Fink to keep their mouth shut about raising the retirement age. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I'm going to dedicate my time to telling people to quit talking about raising the retirement age. I will. I'll look into it. Please search Sneeko Brett Cooper. Was w Brett Cooper X? What? Have they been going at Brett Cooper? She's... She's she, the, she's she's the, the ben girl. Shapiro look alike. Yeah, she's yeah. the girl who looks like a like Ben Shapiro's daughter. Yeah, I don't know if they've been going at it. Hang on, I am going to search for this right now, ladies and gentlemen. We got more Richard Dawkins to watch, but uh, Brett Cooper. Brett sounds like a guy's name. I know, a terrible name. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I don't see. Anything. I don't see anything. I don't see anything. Though. <clears throat> Why did Rebecca publish a video titled "Trans"? Trans women are women. Is it because? <laughs> uh, happy Assyrian New Year. Assyrian New Year? Assyrian New Year. I do find it weird that Dawkins spent decades speaking about the evils of Christianity only to speak of his love for the fruits of Christian nations. <laughs> that is funny. I kind of like it. I I legitimately want to see what happens here. Like, I want to know. I want to know how this is going to work out. Robert Spencer's uh, book, Rating America's Presidents, Washington pointed to America's unity no matter what and avoided immigration from the French Revolution. <clears throat> He's got a yes. book. He's got a book, Rating the Presidents. I'm good friends with Robert. I didn't know that. Is it true Israel. that Allah took the Shahada in the Quran? Yeah, I think is that Surah three verse eighteen. He said Allah says He bears witness that there's no god but Allah. Hang on, I will. I will. No, I'll worry about that later. <clears throat> what? Importing people that believe Rax is freedom fighting while spending billions on them is our biggest mistake. We should spend half of that on the poor we already have here and invest in them. It is an issue, guys, when birth rates drop. You don't have enough people entering the workforce, so you have to do something. I would recommend having more kids. But the point is, if you if you do not have enough workers entering the workforce to replace the workers who are retiring or dying, you're going to end up with uh, with officials who bring in lots of immigrants. And I don't I don't have a problem with immigrants. I have a problem with immigrants with really bad, dangerous ideas. That's what I have a problem with. But 
because of because of certain forces in society, you're not allowed to say, oh, we'll take we're, we're going to we're going to do some picking and choosing here in terms of the immigrants that we take. And we're going to take immigrants with good ideas that we agree with and they're going to fit in well, as opposed to people who believe that they you know, can you know, murder their daughters if they don't dress a certain way and so on. But you can't do that because that would be Islamophobic and that's a big no, no right now. Can we all agree that Peeps marshmallows are the worst Easter treat? Yes, they're pretty much the worst thing ever, with the possible exception of Mike Winger's videos. All right, back to uh, Richard Dawkins here. I fast forward a little bit. Uh, I think we're through his heartless, disgusting rant against Islam. Maybe he gets into something that we can all enjoy. Hostile to gays. Um, and uh, I find that I like to live in a culturally Christian country, although I do not believe a single word of the Christian faith. Just for balance, should we should we say something about fundam fundamentalist Christians who, you know, we can see abortion rights, there reproductive rights being rolled back um, in, in, you know, Republican you know states what, in America. You know what so annoys me? You know what annoys me to no end so much? I, I know that uh, a conversation like this, if it happens in public, this has to happen. Mm -hmm. It has to be thrown in. It has to be brought up. It, it annoys me so much that people in the West, when having such a conversation, feel the need to do exactly this, just for balance. For balance, shall we also mention? Shall shall we also mention that there are Christians who 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 are all, also a little bit, you know, uh, problematic? Shall shall we also mention that there are yeah. certain uh, Christian Christian uh, movements and Christian yeah, groups would have been, been not, funny. Would have been funny. Would have been funny because I don't know what he's going to say after this, but it would have been funny if he's just like, uh, yeah, of course you could complain about anything at any time, but right now I'm focusing on what's going on right here, <laughs> and the fact that I do not like it. <laughs> And I just pointed out that you could have objections to Christianity. I'm talking about way worse things. Would have been funny. I don't know. If, if she asked me this question, I would probably give a pretty harsh response to that. Yeah. Um, let's see. And guys, um, as far as Roe v. Wade, because Harris brought this up. And I don't, I, don't, I, I don't think most people in lots of other places understand what happened with, with Roe v. Wade. Give you a quick rundown, ladies and gentlemen. When the United States became the United States, the, the, the question was, are we going to be a country or separate or separate little countries and so on and say, hey, let's have a federal government so that we're, we're, we have separate states, but we're, there's a federal government, one government that we're all under. And they are you going to explain the whole federation and the legal I'm just system? Gonna, just, the just, States just, to just, just Roe v. Wade, because I see so many okay. people outside the. Well, there are tons of people in the United States who don't understand it, but everyone outside the U.S. doesn't understand what just happened. So, it's basically in the Constitution. It says, "Here's what the federal government can do," and if it's not, if it's not something listed here that the federal government gets to do, then your state decides. You elect representatives in your state who decide what you're going to do in your state. Guess what? Nothing about abortion under the federal government. And so that was for a long time. That was a state's issue. Your state decides what you want the what you want the law to be. Uh, anyway, when you had Roe v. Wade, the courts stepped in and said, because the courts interpret the law, and they said, we're interpreting the Constitution as saying that you can have an abortion. There's nothing, there's nothing in there that you, you really have to do some some intellectual gymnastics to get from the Constitution uh, something about abortion. So it was a it was a cre regardless of your opinion on abortion and right to uh, right to abort, regardless of your position, that was a stupid. That was the court stepping in and saying we're doing the job that Congress is supposed to do. Congress can make amendments to the Constitution. Congress can make an amendment tomorrow saying everyone has to agree that women can have uh, abortions. Congress can do that tomorrow. Congress has never done that. Congress is supposed to make the laws. The court stepped in and did the law, did the job of the lawmakers instead of law interpreters. And what happened recently with the overthrowing of that is they just said, that's a crap decision. We need to get rid of that decision. What happens? That just means it's not the federal government's decision e anymore. It's the state's decision. So if your state decides to that uh, abortions are legal to whatever period, that they can do that. And if they decide otherwise, then they can do that as well. That's what happens. So your state decides, your state decides what the uh, what the rules are. So Roe v. Wade did not say uh, abortion is, I mean, the, the overthrow of Roe v. Wade was not we're overthrowing ab abortion laws or something like that. It was just, this isn't the federal government's decision. This is a state's decision. 
that could change. You could have Congress again, Congress can't, but that's the idea. Congress, that's that's all the people that are sent by the states. If they all agree that this is something for the federal government, then that can change. Until then, it's a state's issue. So if you don't like something, then get different people elected in your state. Hey, you see this? Watch strong men, straw Miss Stoltman brothers yesterday. They ate 30 battered dipped fried Cadbury eggs. Very big and fat, strong guys. I hadn't thought about deep frying them. All I deep fry ever is a turkey, turkey and chicken wings. It's all I deep fry. But yeah, you can deep fry anything. Yep. Christianity is still not without its problems when it comes problem. uh, to women. And they're right. Well, you didn't ask me about uh, about Christianity in in America. That's a different matter entirely. Okay. All um, right. Well, I'm <laughs> sure we got some fundamentalist Christians here too. That's interesting too. He said, well, "I'm not talking about America. I'm talking about Great Britain. What's the problem here?" But and and the only problem he listed there was, hey, you know, you got issues where women are viewed differently. If you say a woman can't be a bishop in my church, then women are viewed differently, and and that's a problem. He's saying that's a very different problem from beating and stoning women and things like that. So uh, not not as public. Well, insofar as fundamentalist Christians oppose evolution and think that the world is is created six thousand years ago, I mean that that is pernicious nonsense, of course. Um, right. Well, so hold, I think hold on, I hold on, hold on. Just to just to bring in some balance, let's also talk about uh, certain problems in in Hinduism, and the, and then after we're done with that, let's also talk about certain problems in Judaism, and then uh, Buddhism, then Shintoism, then all the other religions out there. And what he just said seemed to tie in with what you were talking about earlier, as far as what you think of as a pit, like. How much if if these guys over here believe the earth is 6,000 years old, why would you care unless it's doing something really dangerous to you? Yeah. Um, so he's I mean, he's talking about like the treatment of women and it's OK to beat women into submission. It's OK to have sex with five year old girls and stuff like that. And I view these things as problematic. What if someone believes that the earth is 6,000 years old? Like, OK, what would I what would I care? I guess if you had uh, if you had so many of the people that they were like like indoctrinating kit and then tying it to get like in practical considerations if your neighbor believes the earth is six thousand years old what, what do you think is going to happen you think the guy's going to be so stupid that he's going to burn your house down or something like how is this impacting your life i don't know anyway yeah I mean, personally it's the same thing I mean, if, if somebody thinks that the earth is i don't know uh, a few thousand years old i would say yeah that's probably that's that's that doesn't that's not very reasonable of a belief to hold but to, what do i care what do i care what, what does it matter does it matter? Is that something that is supposed to be brought up? For example, when we're talking about uh, Islam uh, coming and um, trying to impose itself as the law of the land, after which uh, you know democracy freedoms would be overthrown and people would be killed for leaving Islam, uh, women would be severely oppressed. Uh, all the progress that you made over the last 200 years would be completely crushed down. Uh, there would be no more free speech and so on. Is, is that is that really something that you can actually compare? Is that really of such great importance to bring up? Nobody cares. If you have a problem with, with people believing in certain things, yeah, disagree, disagree with them, point it out. Say, no, I think that's stupid. I think that's wrong. It's nothing at all compared to the problems we face when we deal with Islam. Motherload. See where you come from. I like the phrase "you're a cultural Christian." I think I'm a bit more than a cultural Christian, although, you know, it does my 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 belief uh, waxes and wanes. Um, would it be a good thing or a bad thing if we became a less Christian country? And just on the, you know, the the foundation of this nation with the king uh, being the head of church and state. Um, do you think it provides a solid foundation that we, and we would lose something if, let's say, there was a Muslim majority? Well, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know what would have been even funnier than his yes? Duh. <laughs> I, I, was, I was expecting her to go for something mild and then she says this. <laughs> Man. Uh, 
Yeah. So I, I like how she zeroed in on this. So, hey, you know, you guys, the new atheists have been working on reducing Christianity. Uh, so you, what happens if you're successful, but Islam takes over? Uh, how would that work out? Let's rewind this a little bit. I like that. Yes. <laughs> Duh. Nation with the king uh, being the head of church and state. <laughs> Um, do you think it provides a solid foundation that we, and we would lose something if, let's say, there was a Muslim majority? Well, yes. Uh, um, I think the king, when he was Prince of Wales, was actually rather sympathetic towards Islam and one of the problems I felt. Um, no, I think it would be a, a terrible thing. Uh, and insofar as Christianity can be seen as a bulwark against Islam, I think it's a very good thing. I mean, in Africa, he said it again. That's the quote from twelve years ago in that interview. It may have been a bulwark against something else, but in co in the article, he didn't say what the other thing was. He didn't say so. It could have been like various for forces in society or something like that. There, he just called it Christianity is a bulwark against Islam. And <clears throat> look, um, when I had a conversation with Mohammed Hijab uh, several years ago. I, I, I asked him a few questions and led him down that 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 road and uh, we were talking about apostasy laws and how every one has to abide by the law and follow the rules of Islam under an Islamic state and um, he expressed that if a society becomes majority Muslim then yes it becomes compulsory to implement Islamic laws so I asked him about about the UK and said so you, you are trying to spread islam to the uk are you not and he was he he's then he then started engaging in denial but basically uh the the conclusion there i i should be i should maybe clip it and publish this once again maybe it's 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 more relevant today but the the, the whole um what, what it came down to in the end was that he wants people to convert to islam if enough people convert to islam and Muslims become the majority of the population, then it becomes, uh, according to him and according to mainstream Islam, uh, obligatory to implement Islamic laws, which means if the UK became majority Muslim, the UK would also have to abolish its current Christian kingdom and would have to begin implementing Islamic laws. And those Islamic laws would include things like uh, blasphemy laws, apostasy laws, uh, spreading Islam, uh, banning all the LGBT stuff, uh, having um, r severe restrictions on women again, and so on. It's, it's, it's really very, very simple. There is an increase in Islam going on. If that increase went on without putting any barrier, without stopping it, this would be disastrous. Society would change. The, the The countries you live in would change into Islamic countries. And no matter what you think at the moment, no matter how much, how, how little you think a problem Islam is, once it happens, you don't want to live there. You don't want to be there. And the amazing part in all of this is you have people like uh, Ali Dawa saying, oh, the, the, you know what, what Great Britain needs? If you want to help old people is Sharia. That's why we need to, uh, to, uh, to implement Sharia, yeah? Right? These guys are actually calling for the implementation of Sharia. That is their goal, right? Their goal is to keep spreading Islam until they get their precious Islamic state. And they say, people like Ali Dawah say, AP, you're dead. Uh, we know they include blasphemers in there, so I'm dead if they get what they want. So these guys are saying, hey, we want to achieve a legal system in which you guys are going to be executed. And so our response is, oh, okay, well, then we should obviously be opposed to you achieving that legal system, right? Since it would be uh, something that, that gets us killed. And when we say we oppose it, they say, oh, because you're Islamophobes. There's a very simple solution. Everyone who suggests that uh, the country should change to a Muslim country should be immediately deported. Sent to Afghanistan. It shouldn't be very radical. If they, if they, especially if they don't hold a local citizenship, uh, if if they only suggest and confirm that they believe this country should become or this, this country should change and become an Islamic country, deportation. That's it. 
this shouldn't be controversial at all. It should be less controversial than them suggesting that we should have Islamic laws implemented. It should be it should be natural. <laughs> I go ahead and make an agreement with an with Afghanistan and say, guys, we want this uh, little section of, of land here in Afghanistan. Here's what here we're going to compensate you guys financially for this chunk of land in Afghanistan, and we are going to send anyone in the West who says they want to live under Sharia and want Islamic law. We're going to send them that little plot of land, and that's how we're going to do it. Uh, occult paladin wood. Have you seen how one of Satan's names means crescent moon or how lunar traditions in Islam connect demon worship in Canaan? No, not familiar with that. <clears throat> I noticed that I noticed this as part of my arguments for beauty. Atheists love beauty. No, they don't. Especially that which calls to the transcendent, but reject the transcendent. No, seriously. Yeah, yeah, that is... Uh, and that would apply to Richard Dawkins as well. And really, hey, is this David? I'm so, I've, I forgot to get back to him. I think this, yeah, that's got to be David S. What are you yeah, trying to? Yeah. Why haven't you been getting back to him? Because I'm I'm terrible at getting back to everyone, no matter who it is. Uh, so. And you're an atheist, shocker. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, but yeah, you do have atheist loving. And you see this. You can see this among all of the uh, all of the uh, the champions of the new atheist. There's something. There are things that they love, which kind of only make sense if they're somehow transcendent, and yet they'll reject the idea. Hey, check this out. Here's my Dimi Jizya tax to be paid to my Turkish Ottoman overlord AP. Well, it doesn't. You're on my channel right now. So try again. Better luck next time. Yeah. <clears throat> May be funded to cause further apostasy in Islam and turn people to Christianity, mashallah. P.S. Confront Eddie from the Dean Show. How would we do that? Hey, I'll go ahead and say it now. Anytime, any day, any night, Eddie from the Dean Show wants to jump, come join us live and have a discussion. He can. Yeah. Eddie, uh, you're a no, loser. It'll never happen. Eddie, you're a loser. Uh, you're terrible. You're, you're a loser. Terrified. You're scared. You're a coward. You're, you're a coward. coward. Not a real if, man until you should join us on our show. If we debated you, if we had a discussion with you, you would be humiliated. Be humiliated. You would be humiliated. You would be scared. You would be embarrassed. Your face would turn red and you would mm. never, ever, ever dare again show your face in public Prove without us wrong. feeling embarrassment. You will be Prove humiliated. Us wrong. So you wouldn't even try. You wouldn't try. Yeah. Prove us wrong. Uh, humor me. If the Pope converted to Islam, what would the Dawa guys think? Oh, this would be the this would be the greatest proof in the history of Islam that Islam is true. It, it doesn't have to be the Pope. It could be anyone with a following. Anyone with a following who converts to Islam, this is the amazing proof. When Muslims leave Islam, that's that's no proof of anything. Uh, when people when famous people convert to something else, it's no evidence of anything. But when anyone with a following converts to Islam, this is the proof that Islam is true. And that's just the methodology. You know, what's funny, I was uh, looking for Sneeko uh, sne uh, screenshots yesterday, and I, I'm looking through his stuff, through his <clears throat> streams, and he is meeting um, with, 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 with Islamic scholars and sitting down there and talking. And then just a week before, he's double dating with this, uh, this half-naked uh, rapper girl sitting at the table and having a doing double dating together and flirting and all of that. And he obviously doesn't care. <laughs> and this is the guy that, that they use to still, you know, put in our faces and say, Oh, reasonable people like him, they mm -hmm. convert to Islam. Alhamdulillah, they are reverts. Mm -hmm. I, if, if Kim Kardashian converted to Islam, they would probably use her too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even if even if she didn't change one bit, or even if she became worse, it would be the uh, the great proof. You see, you see, yeah. women convert to Islam because it's true. When everyone who converts to Islam is just because they've been manipulated, right? Like you ask these guys, why did you believe this? And then you hear, oh, well, you know, once I found out about the 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 book of the Council and I see it been removed from the Bible, but there's only one Quran. I said, oh, this is for me, and like it's all nonsense. Can you imagine the pain that we would all be in if <laughs> if Kanye West converted to Islam? Oh and yeah, this would be the proof. <laughs> they would be having a field. Candace day. Owens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, man. Uh, you going to listen to the new album by Lil Aisha? No, I don't listen to a little kid's music. <laughs> Lil Aisha. <laughs> I, I haven't listened to the new one yet, so I have to check it out. All right, back to uh, our good friend Richard Dawkins. For example, um, where you have missionaries of both faiths operating. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm on Team Christian side as far as that's concerned. Oh, it's interesting because I sort of. <laughs> I'm on Team Christian side. I'm going to totally clip that. What was he actually responding to here? Let me back this up slightly. If the system in place, uh, King Christianity. If the had trajectory gone, continues. Yeah, I just backed that up a few. I seconds. think the king, when he was Prince of Wales, was actually rather sympathetic towards Islam, and one of the problems I felt. Um, no, I think it would be a, a terrible thing. Uh, and insofar as Christianity can be seen as a bulwark against Islam, I think it's, it's a very good thing. I mean, in Africa, for example, um, where you have missionaries of both faiths oh, operating, um, I'm 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 on Team Christian side as far as that's concerned. <laughs> I'm clipping that, man. I am clipping that. I'm on Team Christian side. <clears throat> Did you catch that, guys? He said, "Hey, Christian missionaries and Muslim missionaries are in Africa. I'm on Team Christian." Hey, uh, gonna you know take what's, a you know lot to drag me away from you. Richard Dawkins just blessed the Christians in Africa. I go. Ahead. I'm I'm Team Christians too in this case. Um, the other day, Rebecca published a video about her thoughts on Gaza, and I was listening to it. Um, although I don't listen to videos at all, that was the first video that I ever listened to. Um, probably not the first, probably one of a few. But anyway, um, there she was talking about the people of Gaza, and she basically said um, maybe they should all convert to a different religion. They should all become Christians, and then they would actually have values. They would actually have values, something that they never had before. Wow. You know. <laughs> By the way, I on I on even you know? <laughs> I on Hersi Ali even before even before her you know uh, recently when she said she identifies as a, a Christian now, but like, I'm talking like uh, 14, 15 years ago when she's rolling she's rolling with the new atheists. But she said back then she said. Uh, hey, you atheists who are trying to uh, convert all these Muslims, you might you might be more successful in converting in, in converting them to Christianity, and that would be better. Convert them, focus yeah. on converting them. Not everyone's gonna not everyone's gonna buy the you know the atheists. Like no, not everyone's gonna buy. There's no creator and so on. Not everyone's gonna buy that. So focus on on uh, helping out the missionaries. That's funny. <laughs> I'm on I'm on Team Christian here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't buy your I don't buy your nothingness. I can get like ten I can get like ten awesome uh, Twitter clips out of this one little one little discussion yeah. here. Good. It's interesting because I sort of thought that you would be more of a Hitchenite. God is not great uh, advocate. That's exactly. But what it's he interesting is. to me that you see the value and the force for good of. Well, the United. It's just like you uh, could say. You could say, "Here's what I believe, and here's the best." But here we're in a real world, and if I have to choose between these two things, both of which I reject, but I think this is way better than this one. And these are the atheists aren't atheists aren't sending the missionaries to Africa. So if these are the guys sending missionaries to Africa, I can say I prefer that one to that one. I'm pretty sure if uh, if Christopher Hitchens was put in the in that chair. He'd and the asked the question, he would probably have answered quite similarly. But more eloquently. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, he would be more blunt, I think. He might be drunk. Yeah, if definitely. If he's not drunk, it would be more eloquent. Yeah. Indeed. The I mean, kingdom uh, having a Christian foundation. Yes, but I, I must emphasize that, that I think that, that, that the things that Christians believe are, are actually nonsense. I mean, I, th I think that um, yeah, you when you, that when you say you, 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 you waver, I, I wanted to ask you, when, do you actually believe that Jesus had a, a virgin for a mother? Do you actually believe he rose from the dead? I, I suspect well, you weirdly, probably don't. Since you ask, since you ask, oh, Richard, if I may, because I was at New College when you were, you were a, a you, I think, yeah. are you still a Don at New College? Yes. Well, I'm retired. But, You're retired, but, yes, but you I mean, don't look anyway. Um, weirdly, I was th just three weeks ago at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, where m m the, uh, we were the, Christian, too. the Christians believe that he, 
Christ was crucified or there was the tomb or the Gethsemane was just there and Golgotha was there. And I have to admit that there is a real force. I mean, it feels like the fulcrum of three world religions. It really does. And Christianity is palpable there. It almost the place pulses with Christianity. Um, I, I don't based. know whether it made me believe the Bible. <laughs> Did you say based? Yeah. Anymore, but I certainly felt. Maybe, maybe it's just Jesus association was... because when we went to the church, uh, we were in there. We had this little little clip where you were filming, mm -hmm. and then you pointed the camera at me. And I oh, said, oh yeah, you said based. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so guys, if you didn't see the if you didn't see the clip, I think I posted it on like Twitter or whatever. But yeah, we went to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and I wanted to record this uh, video going through the uh, history of things. But most of the place was closed. We got to go into the uh, empty tomb, but most of it is closed for renovations. They apparently thought that uh, since there's a war going on and so on, and their tourism is down, this is a good time for renovations and so on. So most of it was closed. But uh, she went there too, so that's interesting. That's very, very interesting. I, I do want to hear what he, what Richard said earlier, once again, right before this, about Christian beliefs. Do you want to go back? Yeah, I just want to hear that part again. Let's see. Let's go at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. I, I well, weirdly, probably... Christian Foundation. Yes, but I, I must emphasize that, that I think that, that, that the things that Christians believe are, are actually nonsense. I mean, I, th I think that um, when, you, when you say you, 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 you waver, I, I wanted to ask... Are you talking about this or earlier? Yeah, this. this. Okay. When, yeah. Do you actually believe that Jesus had a, a virgin for a mother? Do you actually believe he rose from the dead? I, I suspect well, weirdly, you probably don't. Since you... Well, Richard, the first living cell had a virgin for a mother. A virgin no, just rock. earlier... <laughs> Earlier when, when he when he said that you got triggered, so I wanted to go back and just watch it again. <laughs> I didn't well, ask, since you asked Richard, if I may, because I was at New College when you were, you were, a, a, there is a real force. I mean, it with Christianity. Um, I, I don't know whether it made me believe the Bible anymore, but I certainly felt that Jesus was a historical figure. Yes, uh -huh, I, yeah. I did believe that. Well, Am I wrong well, yes, to think I mean, that? No, no, I mean, that's, that's quite different. But do you believe that his mother was a, was a virgin? Well, I mean, maybe... Say yes and be based. Of... <laughs> well, that's biologically impossible, isn't Destroyed. it? Destroyed. Humiliated. Did you, hear, did you hear what she just said? Because he would agree. It's biologically impossible. No one ever said it's biologically. <laughs> it's just biologically normal. That's the idea of having a miracle. Right. Exactly. So the question for the lady, OK, do you believe in a God who can perform miracles? No one's saying it just happened by itself. Anyway. Yeah. It is. Yes. It's not. Well, meant to I mean, be uh, I mean, I used to make a joke that most second children are virgin births because you can. Know, anyway, we, we, we yeah. don't want to go into that. Yes. But um, yes, you know what I'm saying. Um, were you pleased that Rishi Sunak talked about Christian values in his he said Christian Ooh. values are British values in his Ooh. Easter message. You seem to be on the same page. Uh, yes, I, I didn't hear that. But, but, but that's what but he said. Yes, I, I, I suppose so. But I, I don't want to be misunderstood. I mean, I, I do think it's nonsense. But, uh, but um, the... I do think it's nonsense. I just prefer what it produces. <laughs> the, the Christian belief, the, I mean, today is Easter. And, and of course, I don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead. And I don't believe you do either. Um, do you? Do I believe that Jesus <laughs> rose from the dead? I mean, you're really putting me on the spot. I would like to believe he did. Yes, I, I mentioned yeah, the resurrection. Different. I mentioned the resurrection. By the way, just quickly, because I've been told we've got to stop. When my son, my son was two, uh, we took him to church and um, it, the priest said, uh, you can ask me anything. And he said th that my two-year-old son said, asked the priest, do you know Jesus to be true or do you believe Jesus to be true? To be, and then, and do you see what I mean? And he couldn't answer that question himself. Anyway, yes. or God. Anyway, listen, lastly, just one thing. Does it matter, I'm going to ask you again, if Christianity is a minority religion in this country? I think it matters from a cultural point of view. That's a very clear answer from you, Richard Dawkins. Thank you so much for joining us from, I look like New College, but he, uh, Richard Beast. Dawkins, Prof Dawkins, is the re renowned ev evolutionary biologist, author of The God Delusion. You illusion. know what's funny? You know what's well, funny? How, uh, dude, dude, said, dude, like 90% of the time you say, you know what's funny, it's followed by some horrible tragedy. 
You know what's funny about all those people who are slaughtered? That's what you normally start with. Uh, you know what's funny? That's because whenever I say something, I say, you know what's funny? And then mm -hmm. I say it. Um, <laughs> Right now, when she said, uh, I, "I have been told we have to, we have to stop soon," a thing appeared on the screen. Did you see, like you, yeah, I, I, and... yeah, I, I was actually wondering, is that my software telling me I've got some limitation? But no, then no, I went, no, no, no. so, so then I went to the video, and no, it's actually in the video. They, they are using a free version of Zoom, and the free version of Zoom is telling them the meeting will end soon. Uh, why, are the, why, minutes. why is a professional broadcasting company using a free version of Zoom? I was just wondering that that's so weird and it would appear on national TV. Wow. <laughs> that is pretty, pretty embarrassing. It's pretty weird. That's pretty <laughs> funny though. So that is something. Yeah. You always, uh, you always say something's funny and then it turns out to be horrible. Yeah. Yeah. But that is actually just funny. It's funny. All right, guys. So uh, I got one more video clip and this is uh, Mehdi ha Hassan's response. We probably won't watch all of it because he's just going to whine the Wind the entire time. Watch me. Uh, watch a couple minutes of it. And see. This is so Islamophobic. <laughs> David, curious as a an ex as an ex gen, how do you reconcile Earth creation in seven days in Genesis when Earth is billions <laughs> of years old? Well, there are a bunch of different ways that you would reconcile that if that's your position. So. You you have uh, you have multiple views. You have you have multiple views, and I don't I don't actually pick one and say this is this is my position that I affirm, because I usually don't uh, I usually don't pick a position until I really study it, and it's just not a topic I'm the most interested in right now. Joshua says, choose this day whom you will follow, Christ or the new religion of the West, leftism, or follow APism. APism is the movement of whatever AP's cult is. Should we call that, is that APism or APism? It should be APism, definitely. Or APISM. <laughs> it should be APISM, definitely. APISM. APISM is the uh, right choice. <clears throat> Breaking news, Daniel High Kick a Pikachu, Grand Caliph of his own imagination, opens his new Islamic sewage business, Muslim Septic. <laughs> Dude, we gotta kick we gotta start calling him Muslim Sept Muslim Septic. <laughs> That's a good one. Isn't that good? Muslim Septic. It is, it is good. It is good. We're using that. Grand uh, Grand Lord Kaching, we're gonna steal that and use it, and we are not gonna give credit because we just steal stuff. True Islam has never been tried. Yeah, that's what that's what always what I hear when I point out that this doesn't make any place anyone wants to live. What makes Dubai the exception in your opinion? Your opinion? Um, Dubai? What exception? Um, Dubai is just, I guess, has the has people in charge that have not been pressured and influenced by a certain part of the population but here's the thing saudi arabia until the 70s 80s uh was on the path of becoming of being being liberal and moving toward a <clears throat> a more free country but then um the whole thing happened the 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 kaaba was basically taken and occupied by uh by a by these by 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 an extreme part of the population who wanted change and after that this is probably something that i would like to actually sit down and talk about in detail but to just roughly say it after that event saudi arabia did a very sharp turn toward becoming heavily religious and restrictive. Uh, in some other countries, it didn't happen. Like in Dubai, for example, uh, it didn't quite go that way. Dubai has been under the royal uh, leadership, and they have been more focused on just developing and opening up and importing workers from uh, from India, letting them run things, uh, having Western people come over and spend tons of money and, that, and all that. They didn't they never really focused so much on religion know, it just developed differently yeah so yeah it, it seems like it looks like it's going to things are going to depend on who's in charge 
So we see it in Saudi Arabia going on right now. Uh, it happened earlier in Dubai, but seems like they're focusing on money. And yes. they'll they'll keep the Muslims in the population happy, but Islam doesn't seem to be their goal in a, in their society. Yes. <clears throat> Surprise, um, surprise, an atheist would rather live in a Christian country. That is a shocker. Indeed. Uh, Bella Bella says, if you cannot have atheistic system in a company like Apple or Home Depot, how can you have that system challenging God, the creator of everything? What? Yeah, I'm, what? Wondering, I'm wondering what this means. Maybe this is talking about in design terms, like uh, you can't. You can't ha not have a designer or something like that, but I don't know what Home Depot would be. What? What? Um, <laughs> what? Um, even Muslims want to live in Christian countries. Muslims would rather live in Christian countries than in Muslim countries. Mm -hmm. Muslims would rather live in Christian countries than in Muslim <clears throat> countries. Everyone this would. Is a fact. Christians Except make. David Wood. We make the best videos and Christians make the best countries. That's just a fact. Uh, Rich yeah. Doc has never had a beard. Sketchy. That is true. I do not trust people who do not have beards. Hmm. D. Wood, have you read the book Pope Joan by Donna Wolfick Cross? Excellent. Some massage shekels towards your next visit. No, not familiar with that uh, at all. And it doesn't seem like, doesn't seem like a book that I would ever read. Just given the topics Always. that I'm normally interested in. How Always does an atheist often. society deal with the low birth rates when God is removed? That is something I, I pointed this out probably like 10, maybe 10 years or so ago. Because in that in that Pew study that said Islam is the world's fastest growing religion, it said that it's because of the birth rates, but they listed the birth rates of various groups. And Atheists tend to have the lowest birth rates. They tend to have the lowest birth rates. So I pointed out back then that it would be an issue for atheists. If you guys have the lowest birth rates and Muslims have the highest birth rates and the birth rates of atheists end up being lower than, than just the number, significantly lower than what's needed to replace the people who are dying, how do you avoid what's happening? And they've never... I've never seen anyone figure out a problem with that. I mean, figure out figure out a solution to the problem with that. The the issue is it's not just atheism. Uh, it is that um, societies, no matter um, what they are built on or what what they follow, um, as they develop more and more, the birth rates decline. Um, it, this is true for atheist no. societies. Yeah, yeah you're tr what you're saying is true. And it's true even of Muslims. When Muslims move to the yeah. West, their birth rates drop. I'm saying even within a place like Great Britain, you can look at the list. Muslims still have the highest birth rates in yeah, Great yeah. Britain. Yeah, no, I, I know. Atheists yeah, still, I, have I know. The, still have the lowest birth rates in Great Britain. So there is, yeah, so there is an ongoing issue. But it's, but it's weird. But it's weird. Like, internally. it's weird. Yeah, I mean, like, how, how do you deal with that? Just say, hey, atheists, we got to have more kids. So start banging. And uh, and have more kids. Like, how do you do that? <laughs> like, I don't even I don't even know how you do that. Um, society changes and adapts. Humans always find a way to to survive. Uh, there, there has always been this whole theory of of having a two point two uh, birth rate to sustain a society to to replace uh, society to replace the generation and uh, make a make a civilization survive. But there are lots of disagreements on. Um, how that actually looks in reality and whether a, a society that changes and that adapts to the modernity, the future that we are dealing with right now, with the, with the changes and the advancements in, in technology might just get around that problem. And uh, the, the future might just be different. It might, not be, it might not be the way that people always depict it as this dark thing where if, if people don't make enough babies, then we will all die. It doesn't have to be true. Uh, well, Victor, Victor said the babies will just appear. <laughs> I think that's a jab <laughs> at atheism. <laughs> the babies will just appear. <laughs> yeah. Um, the problem is, is that it's not the atheism that suggests that things just appeared out of nothing. So, <clears throat> yep. It does say that. Uh, <laughs> I love you two guys. No diddy though. That's true. 
Hey, I wonder if I wonder if P Diddy's going to suddenly convert to Islam right now. <laughs> I, I've converted to Islam. Everyone's just attacking me because I'm a Muslim what happened? now. Did they they raided his home, and everyone was talking about it. I didn't really follow, but yeah, there were accusations of uh, some. I don't know. I have I don't know the details either of uh, some weird stuff going on at his house, and so they raided a place. Uh, D Wood, rename you to Mister Awesome. AP to Mr. Awesome 2. <laughs> Mr. Awesome and Mr. Awesome 2. Hmm. Uh, is there a reason why when you give your life to Christ, you see colors brighter and noises sharper? I don't know. No, I, f- I think uh, the same thing happened to me when I took mushrooms a long time ago. So. Mm-hmm. Yes, your mind was awakened to more reality than you can see with your <laughs> limited senses. <laughs> Uh, Dawkins being Christo friendly schmeckles atheists should be friendly to Christianity and, and again I, I pointed out that's how it that's how it was right before the new atheism in the early two in the early 2000s yeah not not, not completely you did have groups like uh, American atheists that were very hostile I'm talking about your average you just you know the average atheist that you'd run into in school or whatever they didn't care a whole lot, and they they actually thought, okay, you know, hey, the, the, these things these things are good because they can help people. I don't believe in them, but I can. But it's similar to what Dawkins is kind of saying right now. I think it's total nonsense, but hey, you know, I kind of like uh, kind of like some of what it produces and so on. It should be, you know, in an ideal Western society, um, atheists should be friendly with Christians or with Christianity. Christians should be friendly with. Atheists. No, Christians atheists. should humiliate atheists. They should get along and work together and stop bickering. Wrong. Especially they humiliate you. Especially when there is something as big going on as people actually trying to change your society into Islamic societies. And this is not just something that we say. That's it's people like Dilly Hussein, for example, recently he openly said it on Twitter. He was like, Yeah, of course we're gonna of course, uh as we have more possibilities, we will do whatever we can under the legal circumstances to uh, make sure that this country adopts the values that we see as correct. They become more and more emboldened to say these things, and it's it's not just it's not just atheists who are supposed to be friendly toward Christians. Christians should also be friendly toward atheists, and people should stop bickering about these little issues that are non-problems compared to what's happening with Islam. Yeah, uh, you bring up an important point there. And and what you can say is, hey, guys, it's fine to it's fine to bicker about these little points and these little disagreements or to, uh, you know, to own each other and stuff. When someone is coming to subjugate you, that's a time to drop uh, your disagreements. What when you were saying it, it reminded me of uh, the Greeks back in the day, you know, the Greek city states. So the Spartans absolutely hated the Athenians. The Athenians hated the Spartans. All these, uh, you had all these different city states. They all take sides and they're all constantly fighting with each other until the Persians start entering the picture. And then, all right, guys, drop whatever we're doing. We are all united as Greeks against that thing that's coming to subjugate us. Whatever else we are fighting about here, we're all Greeks. We're not going to, we're not going to be part of the Persian empire right now. So grab your spears and let's go fight. Yeah. Same. Same, same. Jasper says, oh, I think he's, uh, I think this is uh, Dawkins here. I'm culturally Christian, but it's a delusion. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> so, he's, <laughs> so Richard Dawkins is culturally deluded. That's what he can say. I'm culturally, says, I'm culturally deluded. Zane said something about being genocidal maniacs. Who? Uh, and the, o- the only people who are genocidal maniacs uh, at the moment are the ones who believe in Islamization. Mm-hmm. Or in criticizing us because we interpret uh, any criticism as genocide against us. Because now we've reached a period of history where you can anything you don't like, you can just call it genocide. Alhamdulillah. Uh, to be honest, Islam isn't too bad if you remove all of Muhammad's immoralities, the historical problems, and the ethically problematic Hadith and Quran verses. That's true. If you took out all, <laughs> if you took out all the bad stuff, it wouldn't be too bad. If he prefers to live in a Christian country, isn't it in his best interest to have more Christians than less? Or he wants to be the only atheist around? That's what that's what I'm actually wondering, right? So you have these atheists who are saying, of course we would prefer uh, a Christian society to an, uh, a Muslim society. 
Um, of course, of course, of course. But it's all fake, and we're going to continue blasting away at religion in general. I'm, 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 I, 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 that's the point. I can't figure out how in their minds they think this is going to work. Like, hey, we understand. We're going to keep blasting away and showing that religion in general is dumb. I don't, I don't understand what they think is going to happen later, 10, 20, 30 years from now. That is, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I can't figure out what the heck they're saying. Hey, look at this dummy. Um, who? Which there's, a, there's a dummy in the chat named Sir Boogie Goyburger, uh, who says uh, it's one of Nick Fuentes' fans, I guess. And oh, he says, uh, the ADL says Christ is king is now anti-Semitic. Uh, dear little Boogie, who tries to sneak such ridiculousness into everything, the ADL didn't say that. Okay, you, you might have your disagreements with the ADL, and you might think the ADL is a, is a, is a pretty pretty dumb and pretty bad organization and i might think that too in different ways and my biggest criticism is that uh they actually wrote an article about daniel Kikichu that was so weak they should have written something harsher but no nobody actually said that the phrase christ is king is anti-semitic and the adl also didn't say it this is just something that neo-nazis uh who follow people like nick fuentes try to uh, make it look like because they want to stir controversy and want to want people to hate Jews. That's it. The ADL didn't say any such thing. And there's also no other Jewish voice who said the phrase Christ is king is anti-Semitic. It never happened. When you guys lie like this, all you are showing is that you people are liars. You don't know what they said. They could have said it five seconds ago and you wouldn't even know. Nope. I even checked it right now, and it's nowhere. <clears> hmm. <throat> that would be shocking. A Nick Fuentes fan uh, just spouting complete nonsense that That's someone what made do. up. Yeah, it's funny. They, they still, they still, does. these guys still post the same. Compl Keep in mind, there are quotes you can take from the Talmud that are messed up, but there are other quotes that people circulate and they give the reference. It's, it's a completely, it's a completely fake made up quotation from a completely fake made up source. And they still circulate. They st I still, I still yep. see them every single day. But uh, these are the guys. These are the guys who uh, think it's fine to completely make stuff up. And it would be shocking if they were to do that again. But I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, what is this? If he prefers to live in a country, yeah, okay, uh, that is correct. I still choose the cow instead of Islam. Musab. That's pretty rude. <laughs> Pretty Islamophobic. Yeah. From uh, Daniel Hakikachu's uh, Pleasure Machine. Uh, has your wife just turned 25 and no longer floats your goat because she is so unimaginably old? Well, try our new Aisha 5000 <laughs> goggles with Predator LCD technology. Ramadan special on now. <laughs> so we've got some of, up, but... some, some of AP's fans coming over from his channel. Uh, why so many rappers promoting Islam and Nation of Islam? They should keep promoting Nation of Islam. That's that's, that's all right. Yeah, I think Nation funny. of Islam has virtually nothing to do with Islam. It's just it's a complete perversion of Islam, and it's kind of it's funny actually. Yeah, and it's it's pretty silly, but you know, red. They, they actually popular. believe that uh, if if you look into their beliefs, they believe that Allah uh, came to Earth as a black man uh, back in the day. At the beginning of the century and was the actual founder of the nation of islam uh and this black man allah he then disappeared later on and is now waiting for them uh he probably he was probably actually killed by the guy who took who took over but uh they believe in completely weird things that are totally unacceptable to to Islam. Uh, the problem with them is that they are also extremely racist. So that's, yeah, that's an issue. That's one issue. Um, D Wood, we can jump back into the video here. Uh, D Wood, who's the mega Chad in your shelf on your left? I'll just go to myself here. I don't know what you're referring to. Let's see. All right. On my left or on the left of the screen? So on my left would be, that would be a Tin Man mask. And if you if you mean on the to the right of me on the screen, that would be Aristotle. So now you know. 
Now base. everyone knows how based I am. And you uh, see, he, Aristotle had a beard. That means he was a Muslim. Everyone who does evil hates video and does not focus his camera, lest his face should be exposed. But whoever does what is true focuses his camera so that it may be clearly seen that his streams have been carried out in God. It's actually a Bible quote. They just replaced uh, camera hey, exposure hey, with man. the menu. Beautiful. Uh, AP, you're my favorite Turk behind Ataturk. Ooh, don't say that. It's funny. Ataturk sounds like boy, but with Turk. Like, Atta Turk. Atta Turk. I, every, Atta time Turk. I, every time I agree with something you say, I'm going to say, all right, Atta Turk. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. You know what's funny? Uh, earlier we were talking about these uh, stereotypes. Uh, there was a, there was a thing a long time ago when I was in when I was in Turkey. There was this this Dutch no, there was this guy who was English, but he was he lived in the Netherlands and he came to visit us for work for for business. And so one night I'm sitting down with him and uh, and just having some coffee. And as he ordered coffee, I'm like, wait a minute, you drink you drink coffee? You don't drink tea? He's like, I don't like tea. I said, "What kind of an English guy are you?" And then he look, and then he turns around to me and he says, "Do you like genocide?" <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, "I'm not entirely sure what you're referring to—to to my German <laughs> background or my Turkish background." So, <laughs> and we never—that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> And it's still a mystery to this day, ladies yes, and gentlemen, yes. what he actually meant. <laughs> AP has been culturally part of so many genocides that he doesn't even know which genocide anyone's was talking about. Uh, please give us an impression of Dawa Trump. Hi, everyone. We've got the new Quran here. It's the best Quran. Uh, it's only $60. Uh, it's the Holy Quran. And if you spend me $60, then uh, we can implement Sharia all over the world. It'd be great. It's the best religion. We've got the best God. We've got the final prophet. What else do you want? Yeah. Frankly. Frankly. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, I did look it up. Uh, Sneeko Brett Cooper with two T on X. Yeah, so there is something. Sneeko reacts to Brett Cooper doing the splits. She's so thick she can beat the Zionist allegations. That's apparently what Sneeko said. So he's on a clip with some, uh, I guess, his girlfriend. Uh, making his girlfriend jealous by watching Brett Cooper do the splits. So that's what's going on. So Sneeko's, uh, whoa. <laughs> Someone said, Sneeko said he would nuke the Gaza Strip for Daily Wire employee Bar Brett Cooper. <laughs> what the heck? We might have to check this out, man. We might have to see it. <clears throat> uh, uh. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be weird if we have to do a show about Sneeko just because of him, him reacting uh, and saying horrible things about nuking Gaza because of Brett Cooper doing the splits. All right, let's uh, let's watch a couple minutes of uh, our good friend Mehdi. What kind of a website is uh, Christianity Today? Is that like a popular Christian website or something? Yeah, that yeah, I think they're I think they're a magazine, magaz magazine, and they also have a website. Why you looking for that's something? Very, there? That's, and now that's I'm joined by uh, earlier. I uh, earlier I, I just I just googled the term "Christ is King" to check if there if there is actually a development, and then I see an article by them which just looking at the title looks quite nice. It says "Christ is King" is not the slogan some white nationalists want mm. it to be. And then the subtitle of it says "Jesus's Lordship is not good news for those who want to use him to become kings themselves." Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> Very nice. That want to is read true. <laughs> All right. And now we have a different person on the same channel, hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully they don't have that message popped up saying their free trial is uh, about to exp about to uh, expire in a few seconds. Uh, we'll see. But let, yeah, let's get a different take on this. So, guys, think, I mean, from the perspective of just a, a normal, rationally thinking person, what did Richard Dawkins say that anyone should flip out about? 
right? He's saying, hey, I don't believe in Christianity. I don't believe in Islam. I prefer, I prefer, a, I prefer a country that has, that has been massively influenced by Christianity to a country that's been massively influenced by Islam. That's it. That's it. That's what he's saying. And Mehdi Hassan, who I have to say, who at the end of the day actually agree, I don't care what he says, he actually agrees with Richard Dawkins. He's the exact same way. Uh, nevertheless, he has to flip out about this because, well, just whining about Islamophobia does get you a lot of points. So yes. let's watch. D. Hassan, who's a journalist, editor-in-chief and CEO of the new media company Zateo. Mehdi, thank you for joining me. What kind of dumb name is Tell Zateo? Tell me what you th thought when you heard that clip. What kind of dumb name is Zateo? He left MSNBC for, well, I guess anything I guess anything would be preferable to MSNBC. So, Didn't he get fired from MSNBC? I don't know. I don't know if he left or... What in the world is Zateo? Hey, does... <laughs> Do his eyes look in different directions? I can't tell. Is that just the way he's looking? Because it looks well, like he's got, judging. I'm just saying it looks like he's got one eye looking here and one eye looking over there. What are you? What, what's no, it always creeps me out because I'm like because those dudes could like be looking at me, but also be looking at someone else behind me at the same time. It's I don't know. It's weird. Hey, I got a new media company. What's it called? Zeteo. Oh. <laughs> You got a problem there. No one's going to know how to spell it. You got to pick words that people can spell, like apostate prophet, Zateo. apologetics roadshow. These are things that people can spell. Zateo, it's like, 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 think if you're speaking and, and everyone be sure to check out my, uh, my media channel, Zateo. It's like, okay, Z, I guess Z and then what? A or E? What is it? What is it? We don't know. Got it. You got to pick something that people can spell, Mehdi. Big mistake. That's right. Watch, watch. He's going to change. He's going to change the name of that. Because of us, yeah. that will not that will not be. He will not have that that same. He will either just destroy it or rename it. Watch. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Anishka, for having me. I thought a lot of things. I mean, me and Richard Dawkins go way back. I be, we've been sparring for over a decade. I interviewed him on my then Al Jazeera show back in 2012 about religion, and uh, a few things come to mind. Number one, for years, his supporters and he told me and others, we don't hate Islam. We're not picking on Islam. We hate all religions. And people like me would say. Mm, don't, not sure we believe you. Uh, and I think uh, there was confirmation of that on Sunday with Rachel Johnson, where he made it very clear. Uh, hold, 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 hold up. Hold yeah, up, I got some up. problems with that, what he just said, too. That's not what Mehdi Hassan said in the tweet that he made. What Mehdi Hassan said in the tweet that he made is that uh, the followers of Richard Dawkins have been telling him for years uh, that Richard Dawkins hates all religions equally. Mm -hmm. Hating all religions and hating all religions equally are quite different things. Mm -hmm. Very different quite things. Quite different things. Very different things. Extremely yeah. different things. And uh, th that's actually what he tweeted. Now he, he's, he, he says hating all religions. But um, hating all religions equally would be an extremely irrational, ridiculous, dumb thing to do. No matter what your justification for it is, I, I don't think that there is a proper justification for it. If, if you come to me and you say, I'm an atheist and I hate all religions equally, I would say you are stupid. You are probably have never really thought this through. Uh, it doesn't make much sense. Religions are totally different from each other. And, and, and by the way, by the way, that's true even according to Islam. Right. Like yeah. it's like like you have these different passages where at first it's paganism, which is polytheism, which is bad. But Christianity and Judaism are good. Then the Jews reject them. Then it's oh, Christianity and Islam are the best and Judaism and polytheism are the worst. Uh, and then, of course, of course, everything is bad. But even Muslims wouldn't say that everything is equally bad. There's a reason Jews and Christians were allowed to pay jizya. Um, and not have to convert, whereas the polytheists they had to convert or die. There's a re Islam is, is is putting this hierarchy. You guys have true religions and you're still following it. I mean, true uh, revelations and you're still following it to an extent. Whereas these other guys, they don't. They they don't have this stuff. And you're, there's different categories of of, uh, of of everyone here. And even the Dawa guys, like Daniel Hakikachu, said he would rather live in a Christian country than a liberal, than, than just a pure liberal, secular, atheist society. He said he would prefer one over the other. So here's the, everyone, everyone would have a preference. Everyone, and again, not, not, not even having anything to do with what's true or false. You could name every ideology on the planet and say, would you rather have that impacting society versus that? What would you want?
So you could say, would I rather have a live in a Hindu society or a Buddhist society? And you, you could that can be your personal preference. You could say, would I rather live in a in a in a communist state or a capital? You could you could come up with any of these things. How is it like the worst thing in the world to say, actually? Seeing seeing the impact of Islam and Christianity on various uh, various civilizations, I'd prefer that I'd I'd be on the Christian side of things. I don't know why that would be so uh, so controversial to someone like Mehdi, except for the fact that he's just been programmed after all these years that he has to flip out and start screaming Islamophobia. But the other thing, while he was saying it, was I mean he's acting like it's this aha we've exposed Richard Dawkins for years. He's been saying oh he just. He hates he hates religions equally, whereas now it's finally coming out. We've finally exposed him that he thinks Islam is in its is is actually worse than other things, which I've always gotten that vibe from Richard Dawkins. I, I have an uh, article here. I have a screenshot here. So uh, Ali Rizvi uh, shared this on Twitter. Um, he posted this in response to people who are bashing Richard Dawkins now for suddenly saying I'm a cultural Christian. He posted an article from 2007, 2007, where Richard Dawkins says, I am a cultural Christian. And uh, the article says he told the BBC's Have Your Say that he did not want to purge the UK of its Christian heritage and uh, that he likes to sing uh carols along with everybody else and so on so the, these are positions that he had for a very very long time lots of people who dislike him or who agree with him uh on both sides may have missed these things mm -hmm. and are acting like are acting like oh no why would he suddenly say such a thing it's not suddenly he has been thinking this way for a long time yeah and I mean, think about this, like he he's so the way Mehdi and dude, I, I don't know a lot about Mehdi Hassan. Uh, I've seen him come up. I saw the thing where he was leaving MSNBC and so on. Uh, have not paid a ton of attention to him over the years already. Just based on this clip, I do not trust this dude at all. <laughs> like zero. Wait, because it, because it's because a, yeah, look at look at what he just did. So on the one hand, Dawkins has always said things like this. Uh -huh. On the other hand, look what Mehdi just did. Oh, well, you know, Richard Dawkins has assured us he hates all religion equally. And so we were fine with that. But no, no, he says this. So think about this. He's acting like he just exposed Richard Dawkins as someone who's been lying about his true agenda all along. That's what he just did. When Think about this. So one, suppose Richard Dawkins for years had been saying, which he hasn't, I despise all religions equally and all religions are equally bad in my view. And then suppose he just came out in this interview and said, you know what, uh, I, I think Islam, I would prefer a Christian, a Christian nation to a, a, a Muslim nation. Imagine he said that. Guess what? That would not mean he was deceiving you all along. People can have a position and then change their minds about something. That can happen. That can happen. So even if Richard had been saying this all along, oh, yes, all religions, uh, all religions to me are, are equally bad, even if you've been saying that. And now he and now he were to say, actually, Islam is uh, I think Islam is in its own category of, of badness. That wouldn't mean that you've exposed him as some guy who's lying. It would mean he changed his mind. And, and, and yet Mehdi is acting like oh, I just caught him. We've just seen his true colors. So so again, even if Richard's position had always been one thing, and now he says something else, that wouldn't mean you've exposed him. He could just change his mind. But in fact, he has been saying all along that he has some special concerns about Islam. So this is like doubly deceptive and not looking good for Mehdi. And what is his, uh, what is his name? Zapparino, Zamboni, whatever his news network is. Zagugu. Zagugu, Zabubu, Zabiba, whatever. It changes, it changes to Zabiba. Back, go, hey, Mehdi, go bang your head on a wall, get a good Zabiba and change it to the Zabiba News Network. It'll be more memorable. And then you can just point it out to people, say, hey, everyone, check this, check out my Zabiba News Network. That's a good idea. That's good. Look, you, have, you get good ideas here, Mehdi Hassan. I know you're listening. We're I know you're listening, fire. Mehdi Hassan. I know you're listening right now. This is a perfect <laughs> idea. Go with it. Run with it. He looks like he might be, I mean, he jumped, so whatever, for whatever reason, he gets off MSNBC, decides to start his own uh, media company. Looks like he might be, 
he might be pulling a, a, a Tate-ish, Sneeko-ish move right here where, hey, if you want to get a bunch of instant fans, just start uh, being the champion of Islam right now. And, oh, we're going to defend you again from all the Islamophobes. I don't know. But not looking good. Looking pretty deceptive. Uh, seemed like a terrible person. Here's someone Here's someone before we started this clip. Drew says, uh, Mehdi, Has Mehdi, Mehdi Hassan already got an LBC and said Richard Dawkins is an Islamophobe about six to seven hours ago. Yep, I know. This clip is from today. We're checking it out. Uh, I have a bug. Been having Sharia all day. Yep, that is a terrible, terrible sickness. I recommend taking two doses of our live streams and uh, getting plenty of rest. Alhamdulillah. D. Wood, judging by your post, you saw the Shroud video. Yay. Uh, I don't know what Shroud video you're talking about. I've seen several Shroud videos. And back in the day, I read a couple books on the Shroud. Yay. I saw another really good one with additional info. Lila Rose podcast with uh, Father Spitzer on the science of resurrection. Yeah, I haven't checked that out yet. Uh, I did get a video that someone sent me. I have not watched it yet. Um, and I've kind of gone back and forth on that over the years. Uh, not sure about it now. Oh no, those fundamentalist Christians protecting the right to live of innocent unborn people. Yeah, I mean, guys, it, at the end of the day, it is uh, interesting. What about what about the Christians in abortion? Is surely this is just as bad as jihadis wanting to slaughter us all? It's like, well, one one group is so focused on preserving life that they will interfere with your right. The other are so focused on eradicating lives that they'll slaughter you. So yeah, draw your own conclusions. And if you think those are equally bad, like our good friend Mehdi Hassan, I think you're about as trustworthy as Mehdi. Um, I'm still not convinced on Jesus' resurrection. Hey, did you check out my my uh, last video? There's obviously much more to discuss, but uh, Salihin, uh, check out the video I posted yesterday. Talk about the resurrection. Dr. Wood, if you were 10 years younger and single, I would have proposed to you. I am so attracted to Christian apologists. I hope and pray I find one. It's pretty gay. Christian apologists are so hot. <laughs> 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 that's a weird thing uh yeah christian apologists are uh are the sexiest people on earth that's true yeah that's true especially mike winger <laughs> <laughs> he's the he, yeah he's the exception not only is he hideous in hideous videos like his personality oh, everyone, oh, and his voice oh my goodness <laughs> uh, all the auto tuning he does to his videos to get, get rid of that stupid voice uh, still doesn't help. Uh, this video is proof that it's better to view the world through the crystal clear lens of the Christian rather than the obscure view through that of the atheist. What a perfect comment. This video is proof that it is better to view the world through the crystal clear lens of the Christian rather than the obscure view through that of the blind, deaf, Dumb atheist. Alhamdulillah. Good point. But hey, that is a very rude thing to say on International Atheist Day. Yeah. Grand Lord Kaching, D. Wood is like Putin. You ask any historical question, and even if it is something that happened this year, it will go all the way back to 500 BC. But at least he's not a filthy atheist, you see. It's true. That's a good point. It's funny. I know it's a, it's a political topic, but... Um... Tucker had this in this this discussion interview with with Putin, and people were actually expecting it to be uh, a banger and be be fantastic, be great, and then it just became a joke. It became a meme because uh, Tucker was not really asking serious questions. He was being very soft and meek. And be like, yep, dear Putin, might you answer this question and that question, please? And like, Putin like, was like, just like giving... so is it like, is it like people interviewing Tate when it's always like, tell us, how, yeah, did, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. how did you become the greatest person on earth? And that's like the only questions I'll yeah. answer. Yeah. And Putin was basically giving responses like, like Tucker is asking him, so, and, and why did you, so why, why did you invade Ukraine? And he's like, well, uh, 
let me answer by going back to uh, the beginnings of history mm -hmm. and explain how the people now defined as Russians came about. And then he talks for half an hour about history. That's it. It was just so stupid. It became a meme, which is very nice. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, so I didn't actually, I didn't watch the interview with Putin. And that's just because I watched a clip of him at the uh, Russian grocery store. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> I was like, I was like, dude, if you're making a, 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 a this long video about how great groceries are in Russia, and look at the shopping cart! Oh my goodness, they have an escalator for shopping carts, and oh my goodness, look at this bread! Oh, oh, they have bread here! Oh, this isn't like American grocery stores where you can't get bread there. It's, I mean, and and they don't have escalators for shopping carts. And the, oh my goodness, why are why are things so great in Russia? Let's go have an interview with Putin and find out what makes Russia superior to everything else in the history of humanity. It's like, yeah, I'm not interested. He actually made it look like, oh, look at this! I bought so many things. I got so many things, and I'm spending this little money on it. When actually, if you if you uh, if you compare the living standards and the amount of money that people make and people have, and the amount of money that they spend on groceries, the average American can afford significantly yeah. more. Groceries yeah, wasn't it? Wasn't like he he was pointing it out. He was like, uh, and look at all these groceries I got for two hundred dollars. And people were pointing out that was like two. <laughs> that was like half a month's pay in, in for a Russian worker. So yeah, his Russians groceries don't for make the, money, yeah. man. Russians yeah. don't make money. Russians are poor in comparison. If you want to, if you want to really go there, and then he was he was he was fascinated by the fact that uh, that the shopping carts have this this system where you insert a coin uh, to remove them, mm. and then you have to get that coin out. He's like, "Whoa! Have you ever seen anything like Nothing this? Nothing like that." Yeah, yeah no, it, it exists all over Europe. Yeah, it's the normal. Well, I, I've seen Europe. I've seen I've seen <laughs> stuff like that. I've seen stuff like that in the U.S. Um, uh, but m most grocery store. It only becomes a, it only becomes a concern in areas where people are likely to, uh, to go off with shopping carts. So it's not an issue, uh, in lots of places in when I, where I lived in the Bronx, it was an issue. If you went into a grocery store, they had a locking mechanism where if you walked outside the parking lot, your the wheels locked. Mm -hmm. So that's how you do with it here. But anyway, the, yeah, everything is just, uh, how do you get people not to take anyway, this, uh, this treating this like this is like anyway. groundbreaking technology that the west <laughs> needs to learn about is uh that made me not interested in his interview d wood your impression of ricardo lawn king <laughs> richard dawkins is scary good that is what is this david have you seen mike winger's do you do you seriously think i watch mike winger's videos are you like are you joking <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, oh, did I? Oh, I watched it hot off the press. As soon as he posted, I was waiting. Oh wow, Mike Winger's new video on Benny Hinn. Starting at the 450 mark, the next 20 seconds will have you in tears about how bad it is. Because that's where I, that's why Mike Winger usually has me in tears. It's hilarious. I think he's trolling trolling me. Oh, he's gonna regret that. We might have to. Uh, I might have to check that out at some point. Hmm. Uh, Muslims only immigrate to other countries so they can save the democracy, secularism, and multiculturalism of those countries. Yeah, as it happens. The earth is at least five years old. That is true. We can all agree on that. Can you yeah, I would be the source on that. Can you deep fry a Quran since you made the claim? That, hmm, that would, I do have a fryer and I do have Qurans. <clears throat> hey, we've been talking about... Um, <laughs> making a video at some point, 101 ways to desecrate the Quran in under two minutes or something like that. But deep fryer could be one of the ways. Deep fryer. All right, let's get back to uh, our good friend Mehdi and his Zabiba News Network. Christianity a lot. He doesn't like Islam uh, a lot. So I'm glad that cat's out of the bag. Finally, it's taken about 12 years uh, for people to catch up. I would also say I wasn't surprised by what he said because I've been following his career and he's been very anti-Islam for a while. Uh, this is a man who's called Islam a cancer, who said Islam is the greatest force for evil in the world. He says in that clip, I distinguish between Islam and Muslims, but of course, he's also said stuff like, who do these, who the hell do these Muslims think they are? Uh, he once Please. called for me to be fired from the New Statesman because I believe in Please. Islamic beliefs, which he then had to retract Please. and apologize for. So he has a long history. Please. He has form on this subject. And
You know, it's weird. <clears throat> He's saying, yeah. ah, Dawkins, hey, hey, it's finally out of the bag. The cat's finally out of the bag that Dawkins has a problem with Islam. Yes, he's finally been exposed. And then he says, ah, because look at all this stuff he's been saying for years that indicated that he had a problem with Islam. It's like, wait, <laughs> what? Wait, if this, is, if, if this new video is the case cracker and your, your key piece of evidence that Dawkins has a special problem with Islam, and then you say, but here are these 25 different things over the years that show he has a problem with Islam. I don't know. I don't trust this dude, dude. I don't trust him. <laughs> Mehdi, I don't trust you or your Zabiba News Network. Third thing I'd say is the number of falsehoods in that entire exchange. Since when is Ramadan being promoted over Easter? Where's the evidence for that? I, there's zero evidence of that. LBC in its tweet yesterday referred to Easter lights not being up, but Ramadan lights being up. I haven't lived in the UK for nine years, Anushka, but I did live there for... 36 years before then, I don't remember seeing any Easter lights. At Oxford. What <laughs> That's is a Easter very light? good point. Okay, so think about this. <clears throat> so Dawkins was saying, hey, they've got these Ramadan lights everywhere, not Easter. And Mehdi's response is, well, what exactly is, a, is an Easter light? It's not a thing. Well, guess what? Neither is a Ramadan light, right? You don't have to have Ramadan signs all, all over the place through, throughout Ramadan. Yeah, uh, the point you could have that. I don't know. I've seen I've seen the videos where people are going, hey, I'm walking down the street. And, and, and even though it's Easter and Ramadan, everything is Ramadan. I don't particularly care. If, I mean, especially if that's a Muslim area or whatever like that is not it's not a big thing. But he's a, he's like basically saying Dawkins is a liar here because right before this, he said, oh, and there were so many false false claims There's so many false claims. Like what? Dawkins is old. He remembers a time where walking down the street, you didn't see Ramadan stuff all over the place. Now he's saying now it's Ramadan stuff all over the place, which means things have shifted to where now Ramadan, You, if it's Easter and Ramadan, you go down the street and all you see is Ramadan. Can you be concerned about that? My question is, how is he, li how is he lying? Because that was, Mehdi just accused him of lying. There's so many, there were so many lies in this interview. How, how, I don't know. How, how's it not true? Because his, his response is, I don't recall seeing Easter lights. I don't know what that is. Well, that's true. But you can't deny the fact that there's Ramadan stuff everywhere. So I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how this is, is all. I don't know how this is evidence of Dawkins deception here, which is what it's supposed to be. To be very honest, I think um, the very obvious point that you raise, which comes to mind, uh, I don't think Matthew Hassan can actually think about that, think through that. Hmm. It, it, it's something that I've seen with with him before, and I don't know. Maybe it's just I don't know why exactly it is, but he just doesn't have a very great grasp on logic like that. Oh, hang on, Dizzle, love you, brother, and I pray for you also. If AP doesn't name his cult the Apiary, he missed out. Feel the sting of the swarm. <laughs> <laughs> apiary he missed out feel the sting of the swarm of apostasy that's a cool line man what is apiary what, what is it in reference to um i don't i'm looking at that line feel the sting of the swarm of apostasy <laughs> it is good it is good that is good dude if you just if you just post that on twitter just as a line feel the sting. like every time someone says i left islam post now feel the sting of the swarm of apostasy i'm gonna post it right now are you? Feel the sting of the swarm of apostasy. <laughs> That's classic. That's classic. Um, all right. More from our good friend Mehdi and his Zabiba News Network. What are Easter lights? Uh, I know they're Christmas lights. I don't know what Easter lights are. So this is a bit of a fake row. Uh, this is a private endeavor. It's not from the government. It's not from Mayor Khan. Hey, hey. I did. Look, I just looked it up. I thought this was it, but I did not want to say and be wrong and be stupid. Apiary is what is. I just uh, looked it up too. Beehives, beehives, beehives. <laughs> but that's perfect, man. Apiary, and you emphasize the A and the P. That's good. That's good. And then you make all your lines about getting stung. That's good. That's good stuff, that's cool. man. Yeah, I just looked it up too. Yeah. We agree. Yeah, you definitely need to. That needs to become a thing. Not from the yeah. GLA. And look, why aren't we celebrating all religions? Um, my Jewish cousins had uh, Hanukkah in Trafalgar Square. And why aren't we celebrating all religions like they do in Sharia compliant Muslim countries?
December, there was a massive menorah and Hanukkah light. Number one, great. I love it. We should have more of that. Number two, I don't remember Richard Dawkins or others in the right wing media kicking up a fuss about that. And if Jeremy Corbyn had come out and said, oh, I'm very unhappy about this menorah display in Trafalgar Square, you and your colleagues Anish, would rightly be all over him. So, AP, do you see something extremely stupid about... So, Richard Dawkins compared Christian, uh, basically Christian influence societies and Muslim influence societies. Yeah. And he concluded that he'd go with the Christian. And this guy brings up, what about people? What about when Jews do something? Why isn't Richard Dawkins complaining about Jews? Hey, he's AP. not addressing the point at all. Yeah. yeah. AP. <laughs> AP. Um, is there a reason why Richard Dawkins might be concerned about Islamic influence in society, but not be concerned about uh, Jews having a Jewish holiday? I don't know. I can't think of any reason. Exactly it's not like Richard Dawkins thing. explained it. Why would he? Why would he even have a reason? If he had a reason, he would have explained it in that very interview that he's responding to. I have no idea. Man. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll go ahead and. Uh... He, he, this guy is just so. At this point, this is just deception. Yeah, I would say that's what I mean. Because this is my first real impression clear. of the guy. It's quite clear that Richard Dawkins, Richard Dawkins made it quite clear. It's not about diversity. It's not about different religions. It's not about replacing Christianity with uh, or having something as, uh, you know, next to Christianity. He specifically talked about how Islam is significantly worse mm -hmm. for many different reasons, such as yeah. he brought up the issue of women, for example, and the, the authoritarianism and all of that. Um, it, it's, not, it's not a big issue with uh, it's not it's not comparable to problems within Christianity or problems within Judaism, which also doesn't have the mission of uh, taking over your society and uh, installing its own theocracy and enforcing its uh, filth on you. That's the point, Matty. Yeah, so he could have made the exact same point right here and said, uh, but, uh, you know, and then Hin Hindus were celebrating Diwali. Why isn't Richard uh, Dawkins complaining about Hindus celebrating Diwali? Well, maybe because Hindus aren't the ones out there saying they're going to they're going to conquer the entire world and, and execute everyone who criticizes their uh, their fake prophet. Yeah. Right. Can, can yes. you can can he understand their re <laughs> what's funny is he's like, what? what, what uh, guys, it's pretty much every other ideology in the world. And Islam is in its own category. Yes. Oh, boy. And he doesn't get it. Well, he's not complaining about <laughs> Jews. He's not complaining about Jews. So how can he complain about all the people who uh, are going to execute him? Jews, yeah. Jews wouldn't. Jews don't want to execute Dawkins. There are Muslims who would. There are Muslims who would who would uh, get in an Islamic state, and if Dawkins is still there, they're going to put him on trial for blasphemy against Islam. What a dope man! What a dope! I am never going. I'm never going to pay any attention to his Abiba News Network here. Why are we not <laughs> criticizing Richard Dawkins for this? Because Islamophobia is much more acceptable these days, sadly, it's than Islamophobia. any other kind of uh, bigotry towards religious communities. Well, what do you actually think it means to talk about cultural Christianity in that way? Because one of the things I find is you can have a conversation about religion, and I, I quite enjoyed his book, The God Delusion, um, but, but there is a separate conversation, and that's about what people are like in their normal lives. And, you know, I was actually following an MP, Dawn Butler, around recently because I'm doing a thing about MPs getting attacked much more. And I was at a mosque and Sadiq Khan was there and the local rabbi was there. And Jewish people and Muslim people were just living side by side, living their lives. And Must the depiction nice. that you sometimes get of what it might be like to be a Muslim or to be a Jew just, just doesn't exist, as far as I can tell, in people's ordinary lives. Did you... I don't know if you were paying what? attention to that, AP. AP. It's like, oh, look, I saw Muslims and uh, Jews living side by side. And so, see? I, I, I could, f I only followed a bit of what she actually said. Uh, I feel like uh, she kind of She's lost like, look me. Look over here, and there, there were Jews and Muslims, and they're getting along, and they're not even arguing stuff. So, see? See? She, it was such a stupid perspective. Um uh, that is like, oh, look at that. Everything is actually beautiful. Um, shut up, man. <laughs> um, 
No, you know, when 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 Ali Dawa goes on there and says to his one million Muslim audience, uh, "Yeah, we are going to execute apostates, and we're proud of that. Yeah, we'll yeah. be watching. Yeah," then that is of course no no problem because uh, this woman went and saw some Muslims and Jews side by side. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, by the way, that's actually that's actually called the anecdotal fallacy. It's considered a fallacy, the anecdotal fallacy. When you say, oh, here's my limited experience on this thing, and therefore you draw this big sweeping conclusion about, uh, about a problem in the world. That's what, you, that's what you don't do, right? Like, so like Im imagine if someone's like, oh man, we got lots of racism over in this issue and they're doing horrible things. Like, what? I talked to a black guy the other day and I didn't have any problem with him. So you see, that's not true. That's yeah. dumb. That's, that's, anyway. That's what that's what she just did. Brilliant, uh, brilliant interviewer here. Yeah, and a couple of things uh, just before I answer your question about cultural Christianity. Let's be very clear about the Islamophobia here. This is not a coincidence. People are attacking Sadiq Khan for being the Muslim mayor of London. It's not a coincidence that people are becoming very, very concerned about Islam. You're right. We agree with that. It's not a coincidence. But it's not because people just woke up one day and said, you know, we got to pick someone to hate. We're going to hate those guys over there might have something to do with the endless array of terrorist attacks and all these guys. Uh, and, and, and if they're talking about the UK, the uh, the grooming gangs and all the things that they did to young British girls for all these years and people being silenced about it. And hey, you can't say anything. If you say anything about what's going on, then we're going to uh, we're going to call you Islamophobes. Uh, might be all of that. And all these guys, all these Dawa guys saying they're going to take over the world and subjugate you all. And we treat you all like, do you think that might be part of the problem there, Mehdi? Or is that just, is that just, it's just coincidence. A bunch of British people woke up one day and said, uh, you know what we should do? We should uh, really hate these wonderful people who get along with everyone and always have. <laughs> Why? If I went to it to this, what, what kind of garbage is this LBC thing? Um, I feel like if you went there and you talked about uh, how certain Muslim apologists who are quite popular uh, openly now say online that child marriage is good and is okay and it should be practiced and it should be legalized once again and that you should be able to marry a seven-year-old or six-year-old or eight-year-old, nine-year-old, whatever, and have sex with her, uh, then I guess if you talked about this, if you pointed this out and you talked about how this is increasingly common and it's not for no reason, it's because it's it goes back to Islamic fundamentals and Islamic scripture and history and all of that, the presenter here would probably say, all right, but uh, recently I saw a Muslim family and they had a child and the child was doing quite well. So I don't believe that this is a common mm -hmm. problem in society, would you say? And uh, also, what, what do you think about uh, these other religions and what they have to offer? What a useless, ridiculous place to have a discussion. Yeah, so you've got a compulsive liar, Mehdi, and uh, this lady who doesn't isn't much better. Yeah, doing an terrible. interview. All right, watch terrible. a few more seconds, and then I, I'd I'd rather hear from people in the. Uh, I'd rather hear from super chats than from uh, Mehdi or this clueless woman. That including his Tory rival, uh, you have a Muslim first minister of Scotland. You do have a lot of mosques being built, as Rachel ominously referred to in that clip. And people get very upset with change. They don't like uh, the idea of yeah, it Muslims should coming. Be. Sharia law it, takeover, all this nonsense that right wing media. Look at it. Oh, oh, Sharia law takeover, all this, all this stuff that right wing people are claiming. Wait, right? Uh, that's it. Bunch of right wing talking about Sharia, and it's not. Uh, it's not your most popular Dawa guys, the ones who are actually out on the street. See, this guy's talking on his Abiba News Network. The guys who are actually on the street going out, spreading the religion are guys who are calling for the imposition of Islamic law and saying they're going to execute people. They, they, they announce this openly. And your only response is, I mean, this is AP. This is what amazes me. Um, at the end of the day, like, like, suppose he actually believes what he said and he's, uh, you know, I love all religions, all religions, let's celebrate all religions equally, let's be like that, and so on. He's also a dude who, in the face of mounting, mounting support for conquering Western civilization, opposing Islamic law, and these guys shouting it from the rooftops. I mean, you had Yasser Qadi talking about taking over 
uh, cities in what Norway or Sweden or something like this just by just by uh, having the most children and stuff. I mean, they're saying it. They're saying these things. And if you say, you know what, I just I don't want I don't want that to happen. I don't want your system to replace what I'm under right now, because I look at countries that have your system and I do not like the way they live over there. So I don't want that. This guy will be the first one to call you an Islamophobe, which is exactly what the Dawa guys who are promoting it do. In other but words, he does sake. he perform he performs the exact same function in suppressing criticism of an agenda with Islam. He does the exact same thing. He's just doing it to different. They're, he's just doing it. They're to different allies. People. They are doing their allies. They're doing uh, yeah. each other's job. This guy is basically helping those guys out uh, while they are. I mean, d d does this guy actually spend any time talking about the, the Islamists, uh, critiquing them, pointing out how they are proposing some extremely harmful, extremely dangerous things? No, he just gives them a free pass because uh, talking about them would uh, give a rise to Islamophobia. Just don't worry about the actual, uh, the actual rise of Islamization that is the bigger problem that will uproot everyone's life. Now let's let's talk about uh, let's complain about Islamophobia. That's more worrying. That's a bigger problem. That's a bigger problem. But David, David, you just pointed out a few things about uh, a society not. changing and about uh, you know, adopting certain a certain way of life. But for the sake of balance, should we also talk about the Westboro Baptist Church? Yes, to be uh, fair. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we be we need to talk about the Westboro Baptist Church, right? <laughs> oh boy! Man. All right. Well, I have to say, I've I've officially uh, become not interested in uh, in this dude or the lady who's interviewing him. Oh, you see, Matty's points were so powerful that David and AP are running. Yeah, we we got the gist of what he's saying, and yes, you're. Uh, he if, says he's no interest. You, he, yeah, he says he's you, bored, but that's bollocks. It's just my arguments are so powerful. He yeah. doesn't want to listen anymore because he's going to be humiliated, isn't it? Yeah. So anyway, the takeaway from him is the same exact takeaway from the Dawa guys. If you don't, if you don't want Islam taking over your society, you're a bigot. And so how dare you complain? Great. Thank you. Thank you. We're looking forward to, to many wonderful articles on your Zabiba News Network. Uh, Jink. <laughs> what? It's just, it's still funny every time you say it. I don't know. It's a it's it'd be funny name for a place, right? <laughs> Jenk so claims good. to be an atheist Muslim, but he can only do that in a non-Muslim country, not in an actual Muslim country. That is all we need to know. Yeah, things would be significantly more difficult for him if he were in a Muslim country claiming to be an atheist Muslim. Most Muslims believe the Quran is uncreated. How do they reconcile that with God's necessity? If the Quran is literally part of God's nature, then all its events would be necessary. No, uh, yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, so yes, the, the view is that the Quran is eternal. You have lots of Muslims who will say, who will identify Allah's speech, i.e. the Quran, as one of Allah's attributes. And so the Quran is eternal. And so the question that you're bringing up is, if the Quran says all these things that are going to happen, then how is there free will? If everything's been actually written in a book. Keep in mind, any anyone who believes that God is omniscient is going to have some degree of this problem. If God knows everything that happens in the future, then, um, you know, how do you reconcile that with you actually having the the free will to choose? And there are various responses to that from various philo uh, various uh, philosophers and theologians. No, there are no. <clears throat> but there are no responses. But yeah, so I mean, think about this. Think about like. Uh, so the Quran is Allah's eternal speech. So it's in Allah's eternal speech. That you Satan see, he admits it's Allah's eternal speech. It's Allah's eternal speech that Satan is going to rebel. And so there's this tablet in heaven that says that Satan's going to rebel. And then, you know, Satan rebels and so on. So anyway, that's just a, that's an introduction to and you see, the issue. David just admitted it. Dawkins' argument about origins is dumb. As kids, our dad sat us down and told us why he believes in young earth creationism. But he encouraged us to learn about evolution and make up our own minds. His arguments uh, against still stand too. You see, this is the problem. Society will fall apart if you have a position that Richard Dawkins doesn't agree with. 
bunch of nerds shake wingling. <laughs> Islamic, co <laughs> Islamic countries have no work ethic. Oil is the only thing stopping Middle East from turning back into a hate filled sand pit. They drain True. the GDP. True. 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 There is really no work ethic. It's not. This is not just something that you say. Uh, if you actually go there and, and watch people <laughs> work, uh, you will see that they don't have it. Which is why um, the oil countries rely so much on on foreign work, on foreign workers to go there and do all the work. Guys get their allotment of virgins. Women get what? Not much. But Islam doesn't have a problem accepting women to be more than possessions. Not. Yeah, in, in, in paradise, women stand in corners waiting for their husbands to call upon them. But you are competing. You are competing for your husband's attention with uh, lots of specially designed sex machines. So, good luck, ladies. In, in Islamic paradise, uh, women are basically sneaku. <laughs> Sitting in the corners watching. <laughs> That's messed up. That's pretty mad. Hey, dude, you should make a you should make a video. In Islamic <laughs> paradise, women are basically sneaku. And make, that, make just that point. <laughs> oh my God. I hope yeah. people understand that an atheist society can accommodate anything. Left wingers here in Brazil are pushing for lower age of consent. And this year, a 12 year old legally married a 20 year old, our secular Aisha. Alhamdulillah. Favorite go to argument against atheism, D. Wood. I've been reading into the transcendental argument lately and find it pretty strong. Oh, and hi, AP. <laughs> <laughs> I uh my favorite it's it's also it also takes a while to to break down but my favorite would be some version of it's sometimes it's called the argument from reason or other times uh, I mean certain versions like uh, like Planeca calls his the evolutionary argument against naturalism which in a nutshell is if you combine belief in naturalism with the standard evolutionary view of how we arrived, our cognitive faculties, so the processes that, that produce our beliefs, then you can't trust them. You can't, tr you, you can't trust your cognitive faculties to give you reliable information on a grand hypothesis like naturalism. In other words, naturalism is ultimately self-defeating. If you accept naturalism and how you got your cognitive faculties, your cognitive faculties are basically made to help you survive and reproduce. But that's the same as a, as a rat's co uh, cognitive faculties. You, or you wouldn't trust a rat to tell you about how the, you know, the ultimate nature of reality. And so it's basically your reasoning abilities are the only purpose of them from a naturalistic and evolutionary perspective is to help you survive and reproduce. But survival and reproduction give you a certain a certain degree of abilities like finding food or using a spear against an enemy or something like that and they don't get you anywhere near what you'd need to be making conclusions about ultimate reality and stuff and so naturalism would be self-refuting so that would uh, i like that one because it's uh true and exposes how dumb all atheists are it's okay david you can just say i just want to believe yeah, that's all right I just want to believe because it makes me feel good <laughs> John says, you missed my super chat. Uh, I don't think I did because I've just been going down the line, John. Caspian says, Ridvan. Ridwan. Ridwan. There's some guy named Ridwan that this person's referring to. Ridwan Bay. Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. And in him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. So in your face. Okay. You and all atheists. Again, we're trying to keep it nice because it's International Atheist Day, but... Let's see. Drew says the reaction Itisham Gulam had when I wrote, it sounds like he's an Ahmadi on his beliefs and the crucifixion was funny, but sad and predictable. Yeah, it is. I mean, you have a bunch of guys who take what's basically uh, an Ahmadi position. You don't have to be an Ahmadi to hold the position, but they do tend to get ticked off when you say, hey, are you an Ahmadi? Because Ahmadis are not very popular. AP followers equal apeist and their cult apism. I don't know. I kind of like I, I like apism, but yeah. uh, apiary. not the whole apiary thing. Sounds kind of nice. Yeah, go apiary. Yeah, go apiary and uh, come start coming up with all the things about ex-Muslim swarming and uh, feel the sting. I will do that. Anti. Christ atheists are like feminists 
who want to abolish Mount Athos on the basis of gender exclusion. Can Ed Fesser or William Lane Craig or John Lennox swirly this dork? <laughs> swirly a, this dork. You know what a swirly a is? No. I mean, unless the meaning's different now, but when I was young, a swirly was a, you like slobber on your finger and then stick it in someone's ear when you're walking by. And I was like, ah, get off me, man. That stuff. <laughs> Um, how did AP celebrate Trans Visibility Day? Oh, um, <laughs> I can't think of a good joke right now. Oh. <laughs> it sounds like he didn't celebrate it, in which case, uh, how good of a person can he really be? That's true. That is true. Then that is a problem that we have that we have nowadays. Yeah. If only Hagar knew the Saudis would eventually install air conditioning between Safa and Marwa. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Drew says answering Sakura Arai on a younger earth we have found soft tissue on dinosaurs T-Rex one woman was fired for making the discovery please answer how that can happen for our atheist buddies AP so what is what's relevant here from uh, Drew's post is I mentioned how you would reconcile an old earth with uh, Genesis talking about days of creation on the first day God created, on the second day God created, and so on. Uh, yeah, there are, I mean, th the other approach is the young earth creation approach, which is to come up with explanations for why s scientists are getting things wrong. So that's another approach. Peace. Why do Muslims say Islam preserves family and marriage? Traditionally speaking, Muslim societies have no nuclear family structures. Polygamy and child marriage destroys them to uh, stream uh, with IP on polygamy. They, they, they try to really just, um, especially in the, in the West, this is like a, this is a narrative that, uh, in which, with which you're trying to appeal to the whole, you know, the Christian concerns and uh christian idea of oh uh society is being eroded our values are being uh, diminished and so on uh we need proper family values again and the muslims then jump in and say oh yeah is islam islam has that islam has those values but yeah no, because it doesn't it, that's ex that's exactly what islam always does whatever your group likes and finds important hey muhammad was the champion of that thing <laughs> And he never was. Yeah. I mean, unless unless you're advocating some really sick stuff, no, Muhammad was not the champion of whatever it is that you happen to like. So quit falling for it. This is why we need we need we need a population of informed individuals. Otherwise, the Dawa clowns are going to keep getting away with spreading this nonsense. But David, just to balance it out, can we also talk about some fundamental aspects of Christianity? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If the Quran calls Jesus Messiah, what's uh, what's the Mahdi? Sorry if this is uh, has already been asked, or if it's off topic. He's a different guy. That is a diff that is an interesting question. Uh, I I talked about this um, in brief in a video that I made, which was called, which I called the Mahdi Madness. Um, but the Mahdi is is a character in Islam that is supposed to come. Uh, and basically play the role that a, that a messiah actually plays and be a savior and set things straight and fight for Islam and all of that. But um, in the Islamic tradition, Jesus is already supposed to kind of fulfill that role in the Islamic way. Uh, the problem with the, with the Mahdi issue is um, it was overwhelmingly a Shia idea that there would be a a future savior the mahdi who would come and who would uh you know set things straight and bring justice to the world because the shia muslims were oppressed in a sunni world and they thought oh there will be a savior he will come he will be a leader and he will uh he, he will he will correct the flaws within islam he will bring justice and he will uh you know uh in, install islam the right way that it is supposed to be and sunni muslims very much adopted this idea and ran with it and uh now preach it as if it was a mainstream regular sunni idea if you however however look at the hadiths 
uh, into the Sunni hadiths, you will see that there are only very, very few Sunni hadiths that actually talk about uh, Mahdi. There is only a handful and only very few that are deemed authentic. Many of them are inauthentic. So um, long story short, but I explained this in, in that video very much. Long story short, it seems like uh, this is a corruption that Shia Muslims invented back then when they were oppressed and Sunni Muslims adopted it over time for some reason. Mahdi Madness and Black Angel put the link in the description box for anyone who wants to check that out. <clears throat> Based. Uh, <laughs> so Black Angel always does this thing. Uh, support AP on OnlyFans. <laughs> And then she posts a link to the donate page. <laughs> An interesting theory why Europe surpassed the Middle East is because polygamy prevents intergenerational wealth because inheritance uh, inheritances are spread thin. Uh, that I mean, that's one problem with polygamy. Uh, there was also a study years ago which connected uh, polygamous societies to higher rates of violence and so on. And it was because uh, wealthier wealthier individuals would be the guys who can uh can get multiple wives and so on which leaves fewer wives for everyone else to compete Peace. for and you end up with higher rates of violence in society uh david when are we going to tell ap that when christianity takes over the world we're going to make him pay big christian jizya we're not going to tell him we're going to keep that a secret guys don't let the you should call it something different. You should you should uh, you should keep it similar, but give it a Christian spin. Think about that. <clears throat> Historians say Islam was founded on the first of April, six ten A.D. That would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> April first, six ten A.D. <laughs> April Fool's. It now turns out historians have discovered that the first revelation arrived on April 1st. That'd be funny. Yeah. Dr. Gerald Schrader says, MIT physicist and Jewish theologian reconciles both the biblical account and the scientific account of creation in the science of God. Hmm. I've had that you recommended seen? before. Flame says, thinking, thinking of starting an ex-Muslim channel. Should I go with a bang and burn a Quran in the first video? Love you guys. Never apologize. Keep uh, keep it up. And unless you were going to make your entire channel like that, like Quran desecration stuff, I wouldn't start off like that because that would be people's first impression of what you're doing. And that would raise the expectations. Your first video is going to kind of give people the expectations of what your channel is going to be like. So if you were if you wanted to go that direction with your channel, I'm I know opposition to that but if you actually want to go in a different direction with your channel then i would probably start with what your channel is actually going to be about yeah i would just um especially in today's time where uh islamophobia is becoming increasingly uh, normalized and acceptable i would uh not engage in such a disrespectful and islamophobic act okay you're gonna hurt a bunch of people's feelings yeah. people like mike winger the birth rate is so low in atheism because they don't marry their kids off at five. You can read all about it at The Muslim Skeptic. <laughs> <laughs> Get it right. It's The Muslim Septic. The yes. Muslim Septic. Uh, hey, guys, I'm late here. Hope you're well. Uh, have you heard about uh, our hate crime laws in Scotland? Pretty sure we will all be arrested here soon. Hey, AP, that would actually be a good video we should go to scotland and do blasphemy yeah and see what they do challenge them to do something to us it was very interesting that uh i mean the law i haven't seen it. i've seen people's description of the law but it's a um speech that can encourage hatred against different religious groups is banned and it's like how, how do you re how do you justify the quran then how do you justify fight those who do not believe in allah or don't don't take the jews or the christians as friends they are friends of each other or or or, or jews and christians are the worst of creatures how can you even like recite the Quran? I, I, I'm interested when Muslims propose laws, which if applied consistently would outlaw Islam's major uh, sources. Yeah. I find that interesting. Let's, let's talk about the thing, the, the Hadith about uh, fighting the Jews and mm -hmm. killing them 
and rocks and trees will say there's a Jew behind me. Come and kill him. It's probably not not very hateful. We we should we should do a live stream here very soon and basically gear it towards the people of Scotland. Hey, people of Scotland, you need to watch this. Here's a new law. We'll actually read through exactly what the law says. And it will tell people, here's how you need to be responding to it everywhere on social media. This is what you need to be bringing up um, wherever you can. Hey, here, looky, looky right here. You just said sir, such and such speech is outlawed. Here it is right here. A perfect example of what you just outlawed. Is this book still allowed? Just roll with that. That's what I go with. It was the perfect example. It was the perfect move. Israel. Or we should go into a live stream from Scotland and just say very hateful things and see what happens. Hey, here you go. Scarlet says, Israel a year ago tried to make the statement, Christ is Lord, illegal. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that particular thing. I know there were there were two there were two hyper orthodox members of their version of parliament who said, hey, we need to outlaw evangelism. And they got shut down and squashed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you see this, but look how it gets. Israel tried to make this statement. You see what they do? But hey, hey, Scarlett, why don't you change it to the Jews tried to make the statement, Christ is Lord. <laughs> That's what you guys always do, right? You take something that one or two, and what's amazing is this is what we're told to never do with any other group in the world. You can't, you don't say, look, hey, Christians, oh, look, here's Westboro Baptist Church. Therefore, Christians, you don't do that. Except with Jews, and that's where it's perfectly acceptable. Anything, so the rule is, any messed up thing that any Jew in the world says, you can say, you see, this is what the Jews do, or this is what Israel does. And it goes beyond that. Any any messed up thing that any Jew has ever said in the history of humanity, say, look what this Jewish rabbi said in the 7th century. You see, this is what Jews believe. It's, it's absolutely amazing stuff, man. Netanyahu actually made a tweet about that, uh, just to address the public when that when that thing was going around, when uh, a certain part uh, demanded such a ban. The, the reasoning was: this is the only Jewish country that we that we have. Um, how about we propose a ban on preaching? and converting people to Christianity, for example. Uh, and, and this was proposed by two people, really by two people. It was extremely unpopular. Netanyahu went to Twitter, or Netanyahu is whatever, advisor, whoever is in charge of his social media, and said, we will not make any law against our Christian community. That's what, that's, that's what Netanyahu's uh, office said. And I think the president said that this is an outrageous uh, and unacceptable idea and so on. So if you want to once again take an example of what uh, Israel actually said or did or what most Jews actually said or did, then you should be praising them right now. You should be praising them right now for shutting this down and saying we would never do such a terrible thing. Yeah, but they don't do that. They'll take any example of any Jew doing anything and say, see, look what Israel is doing. The same thing with uh, spitting on Christians. Mm -hmm. I keep seeing this whole thing, this uh, one incident of some uh, mm -hmm. radical guy saying it is actually a tradition to spit on Christians. It was, uh, it was indeed, it's, it's an actual quote. It was said by some, by some guy uh, who is considered an extremist. You know what the response was? You, you can you can still find that tweet actually there is a the guy made it made a tweet it's from twitter <laughs> and he was well known and he became scandalous for that you can find that tweet today and you can look at it you will see religious secular conservative jews across the board condemning it the tweet is uh, is 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 ratioed to such proportions where people are saying, what kind of stupidity, what kind of insanity is this? You are fueling hatred and nothing else, and so on. This is, like J Jews across the board are, are condemning that statement. Yet we have neo-Nazis coming and saying, look, look, they say it's okay to spit on Christians. Again, if you want to take um, the opinions or actions of Jews and thereby make judgments, you should actually do that for the majority. And if you, if you do that, then you will, you will just end up loving Jews and praising Jews. Why don't you do that? 
Yeah, AP, just to, uh, <clears throat> so we were there for whatever it was, eight or nine days or whatever. Uh, how many, and we're, you're walking around with a, you're walking around with a, a guy who's rocking across the, the entire time and interacting with people in various locations. Uh, how many negative interactions, even slightly negative interactions did we have the entire time we're there with Juice? Zero. In fact, do you Zero. remember uh, when we went to the Western Wall? Um, one day, I think it was the day of, of Michael Rappaport's uh, bar mitzvah. I don't know, but we were both standing. No, it was a different day actually. We were both we were standing there at the Western Wall, and these two uh, these two guys approached us and started talking to us with a smile on their faces, and curiously just asking, "Hey, what's up? What's up? How are you guys doing? Do you have uh, do you have Jewish family or background or something?" And then just having a friendly chat with chat with us, and these are religious, orthodox, Jewish people. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Just having a friendly conversation with us, finding out uh, where, where we are from, what we're doing, saying thanks, saying all the best and leaving. But if you go on Twitter or if you just look at uh, Nick Fuentes' chat here, they will make it look like uh, you turned into a river and you were drowned mm -hmm. by all the spits of Jews. <laughs> That's the impression you get. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's amazing. Huh? <laughs> so anyway, Scarlett, uh, you were obviously trying to uh, trying to make a point here that that uh, that go the way you thought it thought it was going to go. Hmm? Did you achieve what you wanted to achieve there, Scarlett? Hmm? Hmm? Let us know. Meredith says, I was thinking that people getting blocked on bridges should carry Quran and say they will destroy a page if they don't clear the bridge. Yes, I am a fan. Uh, I'm not. I'm not ordinarily a fan of uh, book desecration and so on. Uh, but when people are crossing serious lines, and you know, the only thing that will stop some horrible behavior is saying, "Hey, you stop what you're doing right now. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take a bite out of your book, or do this to your book, or something like that." Then, actually, a fan because it does work. Uh, hello from Israel. Just wanted to thank you. Yes. Yes, we love hearing from everyone in Israel. Yeshua the King, Allah says we, and so does the Trinity. Now, does that mean Allah thinks it's more majestic to refer to himself in the plural? Yeah, I made a video about that years ago. That So, <clears throat> so in the Bible, God refers to himself using plural pronouns like we and so on. And so Christians account for that by pointing out that God is actually plural in nature. Uh but Allah in the Quran refers to himself as we as well, we and so on. So the question is, what's it mean there? And the Muslim response is that this is the plural of majesty, that to show how majestic he is, Allah refer refers to himself in the plural. But what what's the problem there? Well, this is the problem. Is Allah saying that it's more majestic to be plural? <clears throat> If so, then the God of the Bible is more majestic than the God of the Quran. And so that is an issue to bring up with your Muslim friends. Actually, what it means when the Quran says we is uh, as in little. Like, Allah is a we lad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a we lad. Uh, Michelle here says, I'm in Scotland in UK and we are uh, be onions influenced by islam i don't know what that means we are the onions i influence i influence <laughs> by islam uh plus new hate crime laws and no more right to freedom of speech i, I do wanna nice. we will we will look into your hate crime uh you know new hate speech laws there and do something i love on it that. i love it i love hate speech laws hassan fired for shilling hamas and denying uh october 7th was that beast jesus mithers think bart ehrman is an apologist lol <laughs> he did yeah the jesus mithers don't like bart ehrman what are some ways we can help israel ah, this is actually a very good question what are some ways we can help israel and me and ap have brought this up on lots of shows that israel isn't focused on dealing with certain criticisms of Israel and Jews that are popping up all over social media that are just like what we were just talking about with the, I got tons and tons of messages, piles of messages sent to me, David, you're going to Israel. They're going to spit all over you. <laughs> no, they didn't. And no, they won't. 
right? I even asked, I even asked a Christian there about the status of that spitting thing. And he says, yes, there is, a, there is a, this, this one hyper Orthodox sect that is like 1% of 1%. They're a tiny, but yes, they, they, they are known for spitting on the ground when they walk by, uh, when they walk by Christians and stuff are spitting, spitting in the direction and so on. Uh, but he says that there, no one else does that. No one else does that. But because when that happens, it gets circulated, it gets circulated by neo-Nazis and, and keyboard jihadis and so on all over the place. People think that's all that happens over there. And that's a normal thing. That's not a, that's not a normal thing at all. Um, but anyway, there are things like that. There are criticisms that are raised that the, the people of Israel who are focused on social media and so on are not really dealing with. So that the task falls to other people to kind of answer that for them. So. Yeah, if you want to help Israel and you're on social media and you're on Twitter and so on, find some of the objections and respond to the objections that will help them out. I believe the Mahdi forgot his eye patch. You crazy. Oh, by the way, what was your what was your response to that AP? What would you say people can do to help Israel? Um I, I yes. would also I would also add if you get a chance, if you get a chance, if you are able, go to Israel and tell people about your experience there. Yes, yeah. would always say uh, do that and highlight Israeli voices uh, that are out there on social media and everywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you said it all. I believe the Mahdi forgot his eye patch. Ooh, crazy eye. That is true. <laughs> As he I think he's talking about Mehdi. <laughs> Look, <laughs> uh, big salamat to both of you guys from Uzbekistan. Nice, you, you Biden. What wing nuts assemble? No, if you're talking about the wingalings, man, do not assemble over here. I will block every last one of you. Vidu Vids does the best Zakir Nike impression. Have you guys ever collaborated? Thanks, D. Wood and AP. No, never collaborated, but yes, he does an awesome uh Zakir Nike impression. Well, I collaborate with the Akarai ones. Why do people think hijab won the debate? Uh, I know it's sold. Uh, well, it's, I mean, it's very simple. It's uh, You find out over time. Different people have different criteria. And I don't know. You just have to make that an issue. You have to sound, you have to sound like you're crushing everything your op opponent said, even if you're not saying anything that actually responds to what he said. If you do that, you win. That's true. Putin's Aldi's gives you a coin and takes everything. <laughs> man, man. This guy Mehdi is a bag time fraud. I have seen videos of his hate speeches in mosques where he called non-Muslims as infidels who live like animals. Please expose this charlatan. I don't know. Yeah, don't there's, an, there's an old video of that. Uh, didn't, we, didn't we have a look at that? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe Lee. I think the only I think the only time I've ever seen Mehdi was in something we did at some point. Yeah. Uh, super Mahdi. super sticker from Solitary Emmy. They don't show us the super sticker, so we get the description of one. Uh, does Muhammad wear hijab? I'm confused. The veil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. PhD pedo hijab degree. <laughs> Pimp and hose degree. It's very disrespectful. Or pedo hijab. Uh, the Mahdi is not fiction. It's in all religions. Jim That's BDJ. true. Uh, let's see. I don't know why, but it seems entirely appropriate to me to bring up the Hassan Chop cartoon gift from Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck spelling close enough. For, uh, for Mehdi Hassan. Are birth rates dropping in Muslim places? I heard it was. Yes. Uh, gen generally, as places generally as places modernize, birth rates tend to drop. That's a general rule. Uh, not to get too technical, but fore foreknowledge issue is worse in Islam. I agree. There could perhaps be foreknowledge of contingent free actions, but if the Quran is divine, it isn't just eternal but necessary. Oh yeah, you're saying so. So yeah, if God's nature is not going to change, then the Quran, if it's written, what's going to happen? 
exists necessarily as uh, as God's eternal speech, then everything that everything that is reported in the Quran is necessary. <clears throat> happens of necessity. And the thing with uh, with the, with the Quran is also, or with Islam specifically, is um, yeah, with the Quran and the Hadith. Okay, uh, is that it is specifically believed as the Quran says and as the Hadith further describe that um, Allah uh, wrote everything down or told His pen <laughs> to wrote everything to write everything down. Hey, pen. Long before he brought stuff into existence. Hey, pen. Then that's the first thing yeah, he was boss. Created. <laughs> he created the pen at first, and the pen. Then uh, he's like, he he tells the pen, "Hey, pen, write this." And then the pen writes. I'm gonna create something. <clears throat> hey, hey, pen. I'll tell you something right. That's how it goes. <laughs> so, um, and the issue with that is, it says that Allah long before it happens determined everything that would happen including um someone's birth entire life whether they will become a believer or a disbeliever die as a as a blessed or a wretched individual go to heaven or hell and so on all of that has already been determined a long time ago long before you were uh, born long before anyone was brought into existence so this is the belief this is uh, also this is made quite clear in the quran where it also says that allah guides and misguides whom he wills and it is not in your hand to decide if you will believe or not believe it's in allah's hand only and in the hadith it's it's, it's much more uh, in detail explained and that just calls into question the whole free will issue and there is a big discussion on that. You, Allah, told you were going to say that, and here you are saying it. Please. What nuclear family? Did I join a doomsday cult? Yes. That would actually be funny, called, called something the, the nuclear family, and it was, but it was about a nuclear bomb. Or <laughs> you got a family that, like, grows up right beside Chernobyl. That's actually, there. it's actually true. There are people who, like, like the radiation has, like, messed them up and given them all kinds of, like, birth defects and so on. So it's actually a, a messed up situation. <laughs> So, AP, it's not something to joke about, dude. You need to stop that. Stop laughing about that. There are people who are actually, <laughs> like, kids have horrible birth defects because of the radiation from Chernobyl, and you think it's the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> this is atheism, ladies and gentlemen. This is atheism. This is atheism. It's so funny how that started out as a mild joke and descended into a very dark place. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, this is from Scarlet. Scarlet was the one who was trying to uh, declare war on uh, on Israel. Uh, Layman, we want women's rights. Islam. Hey, we got those. That is an accurate description of uh, of how things go. Uh, I think carbon dating past the Gregorian calendar is unreliable. Well, carbon dating isn't a terribly that you have other you have other dating methods that you use for extremely long. If you're talking about millions of years or something like that, you're not talking about carbon dating. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Sid Dave said, AP, D. Wood, can you do a video on the Rid Award? I always I, wanted to do that. I've mentioned, um, yeah, we, we've we mentioned the Apostasy Wars a bunch of times. But I, yeah, I don't think I've ever done an actual video just on the Rid Wars. I do want to make a video about the Imama. Yeah. <laughs> what? I'm talking about the Battle of Yamama. I know. Really? That's what sucks. Like, I have to, I always <laughs> tell people, I, I, I always call it the Battle of Yamama. Yeah. <laughs> and then I tell people I'm deliberately mispronouncing it because people can't help but giggle or or we should do a video about that and then like just just roll with it just turn just make the video about the battle of your mama and just do like a million your mama jokes some work them into the whole situation you could we should do that uh and other rival prophets of muhammad like Muslima, who uh, nearly won against muhammad and his followers there was a whole inner prophet gang war in the seventh century arabia yeah, uh, there, there are lots of things uh, in the early history of Islam that are relevant. I mean, that, that people still don't know about. Just, I mean, like the Mutazilites and so like people just don't know about this stuff. Um, and and how how certain groups that would now be viewed as heretical or false prophets or anything else uh, actually almost won various things at various points. Uh, you know, what's really messed up uh, something to look into. Um, so uh, Khalid bin Walid is. Uh, is one of the figures that Muslims are very, very much proud of. He's pretty He's based, like, pretty based killing machine there. Yeah, killing machine. He's a uh, he was a he was a warrior, and uh, people were 
people respected him for his big for his skills for his achievements on in the field and all of that but during the um during the Riddle wars there is an incident where he goes and uh kills a executes a muslim a respected muslim named uh malik ibn Uera. and um there are accounts of that that are quite sick um in fact it is such a controversial issue that is not very much brought up to muslims that uh umar you know the 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 second caliph after abu Bakr, who was not caliph at that time abu Bakr was the was the caliph when the Rida wars were happening he was waging the wars against those who were warning to leave islam or going their own way uh umar condemned uh khalid ibn walid for um being a being a, a a troublemaker and having uh attacked the muslims and having killed an innocent muslim because uh he he did he went and killed this other muslim named malik ibn waira and uh took his wife as his own wife that very same night and consummated with her that very same night and there are some really sick accounts that he made an excuse to depict that guy as a non-muslim or as an apostate to then go and uh and kill him just to take his wife because he just so badly wanted his wife and there are then more accounts of how he took the guy's head and uh set it on fire and cooked his food with that fire and ate his food to scare the people against apostatizing or going against the cal caliphate and things like that it's really really messed up if you want to go into the details of the first war after muhammad's death there is a lot of messed up stuff in there um i can't believe anything you're saying <laughs> well, thank you it sounds a little uh, a little islamophobic is all i'm saying it's, and what's it's, your it's problem? i mean i don't know why you have a problem with the dude the man's a hero in islam i hear about him all the time Dude, yeah. it's like super based, uh, super based. It's also just, it's also only cannibalism, which I personally don't necessarily have a big problem with. Uh, of course not. Well, if you don't have yeah. a problem with incest, why would you have a problem with cannibalism? It's all I'm saying. Exactly. Uh, it's vitally what? important to say, it's vitally important to, it's vitally important to, hi, Jerry. Wait, what? You know what that's about? It's no. vitally important to, hi, Jerry. No. uh d wood what's the best way to sponsor your ministry uh it's cheap and easy ways to share my videos wherever you can uh that way that helps um uh if you mean if you mean money wise and patreon anything like that super chats good oh hey hey check this out scarlet says i stand corrected dave thank you that's cool and Totally, totally right. respect that. And that could be a situation where you see you see it online because people you share see. it. People share it. And then you think, oh, this is really messed up. And then you find out, oh, it's actually two people. And then the, the, the everyone else rejected it. So, yep, we can respect that. Uh, aftershave said 72 male goats and few <laughs> waiting on the other side. I can't see what the animals are because it's too tiny. Oh, goats and camels. 72 male goats and few camels waiting on the other side. Based. You know what's crazy? I mean, if 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 Muhammad had said that, you got 72 virgin goats or something like there would be all these Dawah guys would be defending it. They'd be like, oh, yes, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Prove to us that it's wrong to be banging goats for all eternity. Especially then. Yeah. Uh, Hijab says, hi, please make a video on uh, how the Quran's flawed inheritance explanation adds up to more than 100% in some cases. Love, but I actually did. I did a I did a video a few. I mean, you did. A, yeah, I took it down when I took it down all my videos. But yeah, I had a video on going through the math, going through the math. The math does not work. A lot does not know basic, uh, basic arithmetic. Based. What percentage, all right, a few more here. What percentage of Muslims would you two guess truly know what the Quran teaches? It seems like most to attack you to know little about it. I feel painful levels of secondhand embarrassment watching them. What's your view on this, AP? Um... It's a minority. I would say it's less yeah. than 10%, actually. So the issue that would be comforting to some people in the West would be, you see, even if you have these commands to kill apostates and all this stuff, 
lots of Muslims don't know about what Islam really teaches, that should that does not solve the problem because these guys are trained to go along with what their leaders say. Right. So yeah. so keep in mind, if you go back twenty years, almost <clears throat> everyone, almost everyone, if I said, "Hey, Islam has a uh, Islam uh, allows." Um, child marriage, or if I said, hey, there's a death penalty for apostasy in Islam, almost every Muslim you run into thinks you're, would think you're lying because that's not what their leaders told them. What happened as soon as their leaders start saying, yes, we defend child marriage, they all start defending child marriage, right? So they're pro, uh -huh. what, they're, what they're taught is go with whatever your leaders are telling you. That's what that means is people who aren't a threat to you in some sense can be turned, t turned into one very quickly, just because their leaders say, okay, now we're changing and this is what we're going to do now. And they'll just say, okay, our leader's saying this and they go along with it. So, That's so yeah, it's a big concern. I have to, um, just for for information on that whole question there, uh, and I can say is without exaggeration, without any pride or without anything at all, David and I would, I would say no more than 95% of Muslims in the world. But uh, even if a random person who doesn't know anything, if you just read the Quran, you will have read more of the Quran than the vast majority, probably 90% of Muslims around the world. So that's how yeah. simple it is. Yeah, I was, uh, I was actually surprised at this because, you know, you see Muslims and you see them dressing a certain <coughs> way and fasting during Ramadan and heading to the mosque. So this is back, you know, I started interacting with uh, Islam mostly when, like back when I was in college and so on. I, I'd known a Muslim before that, but uh, so back then, you know, you, you, you see the Muslims because there's a, there's a mosque right there on campus and stuff. You see them going to the mosque and so on. And so you think, ah, oh, they, they, they take their religion very seriously. They must be very knowledgeable. Then all of a sudden you start learning Quran verses. You try to have a discussion. They have no clue what you're talking about. They have no clue mm -hmm. what you're talking about. You, you could sit down. You could sit down with a hundred Muslims and start going through the passages. If it's a hundred random Muslims, not, not particularly Dawah guys or anything. If it's a hundred random Muslims and you start bringing up verses about what the Quran says about the Bible, I would be surprised if one of those guys has any clue what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I'd be surprised if one of them knows those verses because they do not, they don't, they don't recite those verses at the, you know, in, in the mosque and so they don't tell them that. So, yeah, but here's the thing. What that means is that you are in a position to share information about Islam that they've never heard before. They're not going to get, there's certain things that they're not going to hear from their leaders. You can be the person to share that information with them. So it's actually, uh, it's actually kind of cool in that sense. Yes. Um, oh, whoop, I skipped that. We must set love speech laws. Yes. The only speech that is allowed will be love speech. Um, God logic says that the Quran is talking about the Talmud when it said people write things with their own uh, and present it as scripture. Is it correct? Do Jews, do Jews consider the Talmud as scripture? That is one interpretation of uh, Surah 2, verse 79, when it talks about people writing the books with their own hands and so on. That's not what the that's not what the Muslim commentaries say. They give different interpretations of that. But as far as someone writing something down and calling it calling it the book, you could interpret that. One way to interpret that would be that it's referring to something like the Talmud. Indeed. But th at the end, it's just it's just not clear. The Quran is hopelessly unclear, in even though it claims to be perfectly clear. But no, I don't know that. That's not really. That's not how uh, to answer that question as well. That's not what uh, how Jews view it. So to them, it is uh, in in rabbinic Judaism, the Talmud is something that. Has, that should be studied, that must be studied, that everyone who learns Judaism uh, must study and go through in order to understand uh, Judaism. Um, and it can, it does contain rulings, but it is not similar to or the same as, uh, as, as a scripture in the sense that the Quran is a scripture, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, different kind, of, so, different kind of thing. A different kind it, of thing, and it's interpreted differently. It's like a, it's like an exegesis, uh, but much of it is just a bunch of discussions and debates. Mm. D. Wood is Allah a Calvinist? No, Calvinists believe that Jesus is the divine Son of God who died on the cross for sins and rose from the dead, and that God is a Trinity. So, no, Allah would not fit that. Is, uh, what? I was going to make a stupid joke. Uh, <laughs> 
something. Oh, love your work. How your work applies to different Islam movements, major ones, and in general across the field. In other words, your work as a carpet bombing. <laughs> carpet. So now we have carpet bombing and uh, swarming. Killer bees swarm. Killer bees swarm. Alhamdulillah. Apparently, Salwan Sabah has been found dead. I've mentioned I will not believe that until I've seen it on some day other than April Fool's Day. So Same. That's just a general rule, ladies and gentlemen. If it's ha if 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 break if there's breaking news on April Fool's Day, don't believe it. And it, it could happen because things do happen on April Fool's Day, but I wouldn't believe it. Years years ago, years ago, <laughs> this actually sucked. So this is like back I don't know 2012 2013. I put out a I put out a, a message. I, I guess on Twitter. And I just said, uh, uh, I've been dealing with this for years. I'm just so sick of this. Uh, all I get is negativity and, and threats. Uh, no one's listening. So I've decided to just focus on philosophy and, and give up my, uh, my work and apologetics and stuff. And so I posted that. And then Pamela Geller wrote this long article on her site talking about all the, all the, all the good things I've done and how, how sad it is that, uh, <laughs> That I've decided, and she's like, but I understand it. the the amount of of uh, the amount of hate that we have to deal with, not just from the people, uh, not just from the jihadis, but even from people on our side. And all they do is call us names. I understand it and hope the best for them. <laughs> I message her, I'm like, uh, that's an April Fool's joke. She's, Are you effing kidding me? <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty funny. <laughs> it, would be fu it would be funny if she said, "Oh, mine was a joke too." Yeah. Oh, that would be really funny. Yeah. <laughs> funny. Yeah. She just took it down real quick. <laughs> Uh, David, you should add trigger warnings or disclaimers about uh, the presence of an evil atheist. What if someone with good values joins the stream? That is true. Uh, That's true. The one thing we can never have enough of. We need to do an entire episode where everything is just uh, trigger warnings, like the entire show. And the live stream should be called Trigger Warning, and we just talk about trigger warnings the whole stream long. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you. No way to thank you. No way to help financially. I'll share as much as I can for the sake of debunking the lies. Would love to travel there when I can. Oh, you, if you're talking about helping, I, I guess it's about helping Israel financially um, for the sake of debunking lies. Yeah, I'm not sure how to do that. I, I would say if, if you find people who are. Uh, uh, yeah, if you find people, look for people who are doing what you want and, and support them. So whatever you're thinking in terms of uh, people who are helping and so and, and especially uh, some of the people who are like starting off and, and getting active uh, also watch their videos and share their videos like uh, uh, Rebecca. So Rebecca uh, has been posting lots of content recently, but anyone who, anyone who's exposing the lies about what's going on. Uh, yeah, I Rebecca is good. Um... I share her stuff on my community tab quite frequently. She has good takes. I would recommend. Uh, David doesn't recommend her, but well, I. In my defense, know. she's an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? It's true. It's true. Uh, can you do a video on disciples versus Sahaba? So, what do you mean, disciples of Jesus versus uh, the companions of Muhammad? That's what it looks like. That's what it sounds like. Huh. What do you think? Uh, yeah, you could. Might, might, that might be a good a good, a good, good video. The disciples of Jesus like versus idea. the companions of Muhammad and what they actually did. That sounds like a good idea. Uh-huh. Uh, Especially oh, since you... the Sahaba are such a such a um, a thing to pride themselves with in Islam. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. When's the next Jihad Watch stream? I thought they were weekly. Yeah. So I, I go live with Robert on Wednesdays for This Week in Jihad. But Robert also travels a lot. So when you see us and we're not we're not live on Robert's channel on Wednesdays, that's because he's traveling or or I mean, sometimes it's because I'm traveling, but he travels more than I do. So, yeah, that's the issue there. I thought the question was, when is the next Jihad? Yes. When's the next Jihad? Uh <laughs> As far as I as far as I know, we'll be live on Wednesday. He hasn't told me otherwise. Uh, long live Poland and Black Angel. <laughs> Poland and Black Angel. That's cool. Good. That's cool. Banging goats. I didn't just join a doomsday cult. Oh, what's wrong? <laughs> if the Quran teaches, if the Quran teaches violence, does this mean those Muslims living in a peaceful manner do not act according to the Quran? 
Not really, because the, the Quran doesn't say that you just you always have to go and carry out violence. It's more situational. What's your situation? What's your situation? So when Muhammad was the persecuted prophet in Mecca, when he was co totally outnumbered, he was not starting. Uh, he wasn't going around starting violence with people. It's later once he's powerful enough to fight, then you fight. So you can interpret that. You can interpret the calls, the various stages of jihad as situational, meaning whatever situation you are in society, what situation, what did Muhammad do when he was in that situation? And so you can say, hey, if I'm completely outnumbered, then I'm not supposed to fight. I'm supposed to preach a message of peace and tolerance. It's only later on, once we once we have enough people, then we can then we can start fighting. So yeah, you wouldn't have you wouldn't say that just because someone's not going around violently subjugating people that you're you're not doing it right. Plus, also Islam is against uh, musical instruments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Indeed. On Rasul, I want to see Moblock turf war explained. No, D Wood. I agree on most things you say on your channel, but I just need to make it clear that Goku can absolutely be sight. What planet do you live on? <laughs> Uh, that's that's I, I have to agree with immortal here. This is well. ridiculous, dude. Seriously, immortal. Goku Sa is Saitama. OP. Saitama? Oh gosh, he would destroy Goku with one punch. That's why they call him One Punch Man. How about let's debate this? Yeah, we could. Though you are under fire, I love you, AP. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. I love you too. <clears throat> And which Quranic variations change theology? Um, I don't know about like theology, like Quranic variants that would change, like you know, the nature of Allah or something like that. There are there are Quranic vari variants that change Islamic practice, like how many of certain things you have to do, because some of, some of the variants will be plural and some of it will say something singular and stuff like that. But yeah, it's not that it's not that the variants give you some radically different version of Islam or something like that. It's similar. It's similar to textual variants in the Bible, where you have variants and you can understand why those variants occurred and so on. But it's not something that changes um, that changes any any core doctrine or something like that. It's called the Virgin of Islam, not Virgin. Ver, the, ver, the virgins, the different Quran virgins. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, we've been going a long time. We've been going almost four hours now, but we have thoroughly exposed Richard Dawkins for his awful things that he has said, and we have uh, glorified Mehdi Hassan for correcting that evil deceiver Richard Dawkins and all the horrible things he said. Yeah. Uh, and the one message that we can uh, take from here is that uh, that we wish for a future where um, where there is less Islamophobia, where there is less bigotry, where there is less hate, uh, where Islamophobia is not normalized, but instead we approach things more balanced and only talk trash about Christianity while hating all religions equally. Yeah, and we need a society where the Dawa guys go out and they condemn Christianity and they blast Judaism and call for the destruction of Israel and talk about all the things they want to do to ex-Muslims, how they're going to execute ex-Muslims and they're going to execute uh, people for blasphemy and they're going to subjugate the world and conquer the world. We want a world where they can say all those things and no one is allowed to criticize their views in response just like Scotland is, apparently just did. It is real. And fi finally, uh, Polly Nettery here says, uh, Hey, D. Wood, AP is funnier than you. Do you have hurt feelings now? Yes. I'm going to lose seconds of sleep over this, crying myself to sleep. That's, that's a problem. It is a problem. <clears throat> Uh-oh. I just saw a comment. Uh-oh. What is this? Goku can beat Allah. Well, yeah, I mean, of course, <laughs> a goat, a goat beat Allah. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, Allah said no one can change his words. And then, uh, and then uh, a goat came in and did it. The goat came in and said, hold my hay and did it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, not sure exactly. Oh, tomorrow I'm going to be on with Inspiring Philosophy on his channel. We're going to. 
<laughs> he wanted to go through a bunch of the, uh, gosh, I, I, I was about to say through the shorts of the Muslim cowboy, but that wouldn't sound right. But <laughs> what do you call it? What do you even call them? How do you say that without, without sounding creepy, right? That sounds funny. <laughs> um, uh, so the video, the short videos <laughs> <laughs> Inspiring Philosophy wants to go through some of the short videos of the Muslim cowboy. So we're going to be on Inspiring Philosophy tomorrow uh, going through the so shorts. We're going to go through the shorts of the Muslim cowboy <laughs> and see what we find there. Yeah, he needs to call it. He need, matter of fact, if he, uh, he should title it that, Going Through the Shorts of the Muslim Cowboy. <laughs> Who knows what you'd find in there, that creepy dude. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, you Based. missed my super chat on a Quran about Talmud. We went through uh, we went through the Quran and the Talmud, so I don't know what you're referring to there. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and ladies and gentlemen, we will be back. So tomorrow on tomorrow I'll be on with Inspiring Philosophy, and we'll see when me and AP will be live again. We'll probably need to go live this week sometime later this week because there's bunch too much stuff going on. There's too much stuff yeah. going on right now that we need to. Cover. Latest on Thursday. Uh possibly before that sometime the latest will be on thursday so all right latest will be on thursday so watch out for that you might not want to miss that one and uh till then we'll see you guys and uh, have some respect for goku in it mm -hmm. and let's all do everything we can to help ap get a camera that doesn't go out of focus every five seconds alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah.